The seats are in place at Delaware Stadium, and now it's time for the show, the season opener of Delaware football as the Blue Hens host in-state foe, Delaware State. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Klasker in the new Dash In broadcast booth from the East Stands at Delaware Stadium here on 94.7 WDSD and iHeartRadio alongside Bill Harmon and on-site producer Nick Allison Drini and Bill. A lot of question marks coming into this season, mostly about the seats, not necessarily about the team. The seats are ready. The players are ready. We are ready to get this thing going. Well, all that has happened in the past. Uh, University founded in 1743, played their first football game in 1889, a 74% win percentage at home. I'm so excited for this opening game. We're going to see a new offensive coordinator showcasing some really interesting stuff. He's got the right players for it, a very strong offensive line, an experienced quarterback, a cadre of running backs, some untested but I think very versatile wide receivers, and a couple of tight ends that can really play. Defensively, Chris Caution is defensive staff have done a great job of molding this young team they've got an experience and absolutely fantastic front the linebackers look for johnny buchanan to make a lot of plays and in the back end nigel hill coming back from last year gives some experience i think this team is going to be ready to go chris stewart has them in fantastic shape from the summer the strength and conditioning coach we got a beautiful summer night let's go get them all right delaware's even no all time against delaware state 22 to 3 last meeting back in 2017 56 to 14 delaware beat delaware state back in 2016 that was the highest scoring contest when these two teams have gotten together now it's time to welcome in the third member from our cast crew matt chance On the conclaves before the game, they really were impressed by what this new atmosphere feels like. It is much more cutting edge, and they said it just feels like more of a happening, and they are certainly enjoying themselves so far. Also, a new wrinkle, as we talked about coming into the year, the students are on the other side. For so long, they were behind the end zone by the Bob Carpenter Center. Now they flip that to the other side, so that'll be something to keep an eye on in terms of just a different atmosphere than we're used to seeing, and the student section packed already before kickoff, which is always a welcome sight. Pat Keogh taking the field before the game. That's one of the things that is really going to be interesting this year. Keogh, always a guy that's had those intangibles and has been kind of a leader and, and someone the coaching staff could trust. But they've put more on his shoulders this year, both from a leadership perspective, but also they need him to be a consistent producer. He has paid his dues. He has worked his way up, got his first year under his belt as a starter. Now he feels like this is his football team. This is his year, and Delaware's going to need him to make plays more consistently this season if they want to have the type of year they're hoping for. Thank you, Matt. We'll be coming out of Matt Janus on the sideline throughout the day. Delaware won the toss. They will receive. They want that football first. I'm sure Pat Keo was saying, Coach, we win that toss. Give me the rock. Delaware excited to get on the field. They get to the starters run by Anchor Buick. GMC for Delaware on offense. Pat Keogh is the quarterback. Dejon Lee is the running back. Owen Tyler is the fullback. Amachi, Coleman, and Pitts are your wide receivers. And then experience comes up front in the likes of Kroll, Lutz, Farinella, Gilmore, and Aza Uza left to right on the offensive line. The tight end is Bryce DeValle for the Hornets on defense. Christian Johnson, Licky Sue, Moses Dupree, Alex Lozano are on the defensive line. The linebackers, Brian Cavacati, Brooks Parker, and Devin Smith. The safety is Dwayne Granger and Jawad Nybauer. And the corners, Nigel Bynum and Isaiah Small. Delaware defensively, Brandon Hall, Dom Cavano, Cam Kitchen, and Frank Burton on the line. The linebackers, Joe Zubalaga, the red shirt freshman walk-on, earning a spot in the season opener. Johnny Buchanan, Drew Nichols, and Sal Morrow. The corners, Nigel Hill and Justice Henley, Kendrick Whitehead, and Noah Platt are the safeties coach sharing yesterday at the coach's show. He always lists 12 on defense because he doesn't want the other team to know how they are going to line up. Hornets defensively, 
defensively, Christian John, oh, excuse me, offensively, Shane Smith is the quarterback, Bryant Dallas is the running back, three wide receivers, Goss, Peeler, and Colley. The tight end is Isaiah Williams on the line, left to right, Hope Sturks, Chavis, Kareem, and Crawford. Teams are on the field, and we are ready for football. The 2019 football season is about to get underway. Delaware in their home, all blues. Blue helmet, blue jerseys, blue pants, yellow trim. They'll go right to left as we see it on the east sidelines. Dell State wearing all whites, red helmets, white jerseys, white pants with red numbers. John Lee is the deep man. Gene Coleman to his left. The 2019 season is underway as Coleman will take it from the six-year side and the 10, 15-yard line contact at the 17-yard line. And that's where Delaware will start this season. Solid job tackling by Alexander Lozano. The starting linebacker also works on special teams. A short kickoff by Delaware State and trying to utilize the win and not kick it in the end zone to see if they can pin Delaware down inside the typical area where you get it. Coleman waves off to John Lee, tries to puncture, but good solid coverage by Delaware State. Here we go, let's get things started with Delaware on the field, first and 10 ball, and season starting on their own 18 yard line. Single back is Dejon Lee, and Kehoe goes under center, spit out to the far side as Gene Coleman pits to the left. They'll go play action to begin, setting, throwing, far side is Bryce Dumalley at the 23 yard line, stays in bounds for a few more up to the 26, and that's a nice first chunk of yards for Delaware. Those tight ends, Owen Tyler, Bryce DeMalley, can not only block, but they can run patterns from different spots on the field. DeMalley, a very fine young receiver. Good job in the right flat, trying to get his shoulders up the field after the catch. Second down and three, ball on the 25-yard line. Those spot this time, Keo in the gun, trips to the left side. Lee remains a running back to the right of the junior quarterback. The lefty will throw, and it's DeMalley again across the 35 and up to the 37-yard line. Somebody might have a new favorite target. Two nice calls by Jared Ambrose. Out of the shotgun, get the ball into his hands, get it out of his hands very quickly. Keo doing a nice job of reading exactly who's open. DeMalley with a little hook route down the left side, well positioned for the catch. First first down of the game. Owen Tyler, captain, goes in motion. First run of the season goes to Lee outside to the right. And he gets up to the 41-yard line. Solid, consistent first three plays of the season for the Hens. Running behind that right side of Gilmore and Azuka. Nice job there by Chuka getting to the edge. Allows Dijon Lee to get his hips turned. He's very tough after the first hit. Breaks a lot of tackles. Three plays in. I'm making a statement for the entire season. We're calling Chuka Azuza Chuka. Just Chuka. He's going to be a one-name star on that right side of the offensive line. Chuka, big guy. Played at Delaware State before transferring to Delaware. On second down and five, Lee going to lose a yard back to the 39-yard line. Losing two. It'll be third down and about seven. We're almost two minutes in. Jahad Nebauer, the safety. Long safety for Delaware State was on a blitz there and read it perfectly. Jean Lee not able to get his shoulders turned. A nice defensive call there by the Delaware State staff. First third down of the game for Delaware. They converted 34% of the time a season ago. Seventh best in the CAA. One wide receiver to the right with Keo. Two to the left, including Chichi Amachi. Split out to the near side. Lee is the running back. Keo awaits the snap from the captain, Farinella. Has some time in the pocket. Throws across the field. It's tipped in. Incomplete. And a drive that started with three plays, 23 yards. Well, now bring the punt unit on for the first time. Delaware State did a nice job there. Showing man and then dropping off into a cover three look. They're playing a 3-3-5 in the back end. Allows them to get nickel and dime backs on. Here comes a big game changer. Pritchard, who has his strong leg in the CA, maybe in the East Coast. Uh, I love this young man. He's got a great leg, worked very hard in the offseason. He's got great hang time as well as length. And there is a flag on the play, which give, will give us a moment to talk. We'll see if we can hear the referee call. We'll go against Delaware. Don't have the refs mic'd up just yet, so it'll go against Delaware. It was uh, what a shame, too, Scotty. He clicked that ball into the end zone. And it will give us a moment, though, to, to mention Jake Roth is punting today as uh, 
we found out Nick Pritchard is unavailable. All the things you said about Nick Pritchard are correct. And he will be a part of this Delaware team, uh, but just not tonight. So Jake Roth will be punting. And I should have realized that by the color of his shoes. Roth <laughs> with a big leg. I watched him warm up, but did a great job. It was a false start on Delaware. This punt not as good for Roth, his first of his career, as it bounces to third in. Well out of bounds and around the 26-yard line where Delaware State will have their first play coming up on offense. So promising drive to get started, Bill, as they went to Damali twice in a row, then a five-yard gain by Dejan Lee, but then a uh, loss of yards and an incomplete pass, plus the penalty before the punt uh, sent it to Delaware State. Let's credit Delaware State's defense there. The blitz on second down created the loss to Lee, and then good zone coverage by Delaware State forcing Delaware to punt. It's everybody's first game, including the referees, but there was some confusion on the uh, what was a, a false start by Delaware, and also now there's some confusion as well. Shane Smith, a very versatile player, not a not known for his running, but can run it, but very good on the run, throwing the ball. Look for them to be very multiple in their approach offensively. Smith out of shotgun four. Gives it to the running back. And he gets to the 30-yard line. A gain of looks like one, maybe none. And several players in on the tackle. It was Bryant Dallas, the starting running back, they got back to the line of scrimmage. Frank Burden and Cavado did a great job there of holding their ground. Delaware's going to play a little bit more 4-3 fronts. Gives them an opportunity to get those four defensive linemen in there, along with Kitchen and Morrow playing the right D end. On second out and 10, screen pass is bobbled and dropped. It was a forward pass, but an incomplete pass as it was bobbled by Jordan Hanna at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete. Quickly, it's third down and 10 for DSU. Well, Delaware does a great job in practice of training their players in pursuit. They do a wonderful job of running to the football. They had a lot of hats around that short, flat throw. That's emblematic of Chris Kosh's defense and Danny Rocco's overall program. Third down and 10. Ball at the DSU 30-yard line. And it'll be shotgun form for Shane Smith. First possession of the game for the Hornets. Nothing, nothing is the score. 11-50. First quarter action. Smith drops back the pass. Has plenty of time. Pumps his feet. Throws. And it's high and incomplete. Trey Gross, the junior from Annapolis, was the intended receiver. Three plays and a punt coming up for DSU. Raj Burden did a really nice job there from his cornerback position to get in front of that deep turning in pattern. That was run not quite as a deep end but at about 12 yards he just curls up good defense there by the Delaware secondary already tested already up to the task and we'll see Jordan Townsend returning a punt for the first time the true freshman had some higher scholarship offers decided he wanted to be a blue head he is a very talented player he's the only true freshman in the two deep in the season opener he stands at the Delaware 30 yard line and the punt is up it's high Townsend gonna wave for it Bobbles it. Ball is loose. DSU might have it. At the 30-yard line, it looks like DSU got there first. We'll see who comes out of the pile. But the Hornets look to be on it. It'll be DSU football at the Delaware 30-yard line after Jordan Towson on his first after Jordan Towson on his first play as a collegiate football player could not hold on to the punt, and it was recovered by Tysheen Williams, the freshman defensive back. Excellent hang time of over 4.3 by Fidel Romo Martinez. Allowed the Delaware State coverage to convene around Towson. Unfortunately, as that ball was coming down, I think his eyes just dropped a little bit, Scott, and that's what forced the fumble as he was trying to fair catch it. So DSU had it fourth down and 10 from their own 30. They get a punt and a recover the football in Delaware's 30-yard line, 10 away from the red zone. It was a three and out, no yards game for DSU on their first trip onto the field. Rolling out of the pocket is Shane Smith. He pumps, sets his feet, fires, and it's incomplete. Batted away by Justice Henley, the redshirt freshman. 
Love the play by Henley. He was in perfect position just underneath it on the trail hip. Gets the long arm up. Good job containing the quarterback. Not much pressure on Smith, but good containment of him to keep him in the pocket and make him throw that ball not a the, little bit early. Not the first time we've seen Henley. Last year, the new rule applied that freshmen could play up to four games and retain freshman eligibility. Henley played in four, a 19-year-old from North Wales, Pennsylvania. Big play there, second and ten for DSU at the Delaware 30-yard line, and it's a give this time to the running back who might have lost a yard to the 31, and it was Bryant Dallas again. Big Cam Kitchen, the captain, in on the tackle for loss. Delaware's first tackle for loss in the contest. Third down and 11 coming up for DSU. With 11-13 remaining in the first quarter of action, no score. Nice play there by Dominic Cavado, though, to set the edge. Turns the play back in to a scraping Cam Kitchen. Also nice to see Caleb Ashworth, our leading tackler from last year, on the field. Nickel here by Delaware. Nickel formation for the Hens. No one DSU needs 11 yards with 10.56 on the first quarter clock. Shane Smith turns to his sideline. The redshirt junior quarterback from Philadelphia gets the signal. He's got two wide receivers to his right, one split out to the left, and a timeout taken by Dell State. We'll take a break with him and be back in a moment on 94.7 WDSD. No score, 10.44, first quarter. They'll see if it looks good. If they're not sure, the quarterback will turn over to the sideline and get a secondary call from the offensive coordinator or the play caller on the sideline then they'll go back and run it there was some confusion there as they mentioned i think it was formational more than what the play was going to be called shane smith dropping back on third and 11 sideline towards the end zone a lot of air under that one in the second pass breakup of the day for justice henley justice henley in as good a position as you can play on a deep fade route he had covered him up the entire way on the inside he looks back with man turn Gets that near arm up again. Excellent technique. Holland Copeland must feel real. Holman Copeland must feel really good already about his defensive backfield in the right position, using the right techniques, playing extremely well early on in here in the first quarter. Long field goal try coming up. This one going to be 47 and a half, maybe 48. From Jose Romo Martinez, kick is up. And just short, Delaware gets to stop after the turnover, and the offense will come back out of the field. Justice Henley running the edge from the right side was so quick and ballistic, he actually lost his right shoe as he tried to make the bend, and that's what kept him from getting the final penetration. But I really like the way Henley's played here early on at that right cornerback position. Excellent technique. He's doing a nice job covering deep, but also realizing what he has to do on the crossing patterns as he broke one up earlier on. So the Hens offense will come back out of the field. 21 yards gain, 18 through the air on two passes to Bryce to Malley. <laughs> Dell State yet to gain a yard despite running six plays on offense. So Kehoe back out there at the quarterback position in shotgun form. Two wide receivers to his right. Dejan Lee is the back. First and ten at their own 31. Good pressure by DSU and Dejan Lee loses two. Big stop that time by Brandon Carswell the tackle for long. Carswell coming in and just sliced inside the left guard before he could get into his drop step. They were running an inside wham zone there. The Delaware State read very well because of the defensive stun on the front line. So Delaware losing yardage on the last two running plays they've had on offense. Now it's second down and 12, 957. First quarter action. No score. Second possession for the heads. Kehoe throws across the field. It's caught low by Owen Tyler. And a game of about three. It'll be third down and long as the tackle was made by Devin Smith. How about Owen Tyler, though? The redshirt senior from West Hartford, Connecticut, was named captain just a few days ago. And I'm not surprised. He's had a wonderful year last year. He's done a great job in spring practice and in the summer preseason. He's a versatile performer, can play wing. He can play fullback, tight end, and also H-back. I really like him. He's developed great hands over his career. Delaro of one on third down. Now it's third down and seven for Keo. All day in the pocket. Throws into traffic and Chichi Amachi double team comes down with the football at midfield. What a grab for the William Penn graduate. That was not only a wonderful catch, it was a great throw into a very small window. 
out to the left. Amici running a deep turn in pattern from William Penn here in Wilmington, Delaware. A terrific throw and catch gets Delaware going again. Nice look downfield by Kehoe with excellent protection, Scott. We've known he's had the talent. Did not play last year. Two catches as a freshman in 2016. And the first grab as a wide receiver for Delaware in 2019. First and 10, the market at the Delaware 49-yard line. First give to Andre Robinson. He changes directions at midfield. Gets down to the DSU 45-yard line. Was brought down by Brandon Carswell. And Andre Robinson, the second of three, maybe four backs that we'll see tonight. Well, I like Robinson. He has really improved in his time here at Delaware. He's got a great burst. Running back coach Billy Cubitt's done an excellent job. Our left tackle, David Kroll, an excellent block there, working the zone technique to the left. Second down, five yards to go. Delaware in DSU territory for the first time tonight. Nothing, nothing is the score. 8.30, first quarter. Kehoe swings it to Robinson, and DSU is there. Nice job by Robinson of holding on to the football. As Devin Smith picks up his second tackle. He had 55 a year ago. He's a preseason all MEAC selection on the third team. They like him out of Washington, D.C. Smith read that perfectly. That was a quick screen swing to the left. Robinson had absolutely no opportunity to get his hips turned. It was the right throw by Kehoe, but unfortunately, Delaware State had an extra defender there that we couldn't block. Third down, seven yards to go. A loss of three on the play back at the DSU 48-yard line. Kehoe, pressure coming. Open in the middle of the field is Thyrick Pitts. He gets a first down and more, scrambling down to the 30-yard line. That's an 18-yard pickup before Isaiah Small got to him. It starts with excellent protection by the front line. Dover State was in man-free, meaning they were manning up the underneath routes, but Pitts was able to cross from left to right, found that hole in the middle. A great read by Keo. Andre Robinson with the give up the middle. Picks up about five. Andre Robinson getting a good chunk as he's the running back on this series. Robinson has a great body lean. He has active feet. He's 225, brings a lot of power to the point of attack, able to carry tacklers or break them. Keel in shotgun four. Second down and five as Delaware continues to drive. Five plays so far on this possession. Coleman, excuse me, Keel. In shotgun form with Robinson to his right. And Keo's going to keep up the middle this time on the fake to Andre Robinson. And it's going to be third down in about a yard. Keo got four. The big fella with some running room. Picked up a chunk there. 6.36 and taking no score on this, the second drive for Delaware in the contest. And he is a big man at 240, 6'4. He's in wonderful shape. I love the ability. For Pat to get downhill, that was a zone read. He saw the action happening to the left, pulls the ball, gets up the middle for a near first down. A great run and read by Keo. Well, keep an eye on 44 because that's uh, there's a penalty on DSU. 44 just came into the game for Delaware. Not listed in the book uh, for Delaware's roster, so we'll find out who that is. But here's a penalty. All size defense, number 48, five-yard penalty, first down. First penalty of the day for DSU, helping the heads down, and now Delaware into the red zone. Well, that's one thing Delaware has really gotten good at under the Kehoe reign, is playing pe penalty-free football. Only penalized about six and a half times a game last year for under 50 yards. That's a really good rate. Coleman goes in motion, first and 10. Kehoe. Swings it. Lee with some running room in the backfield, though, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to lose a lot of yardage there. Brian Cavaconti, a hard man to break away from. The MEAC Defensive Player of the Year in the preseason, and Delaware's lost seven. Cavaconti can really run to the ball. He diagnoses and reads very quickly. He's got excellent speed, had an excellent angle there as he makes the tackle out of the left flat. That was that little swing again. What they're trying to do is get the linebackers to drop off and then hit that swing behind them. Five twenty and ticking. Second down and 15 for Delaware after the loss. Ball back at the 20. Keo has a man. End zone. Touchdown. There's a flag on the play. Chichi Amachi came up with the score. But a flag is thrown. He was wide open.
We'll take a listen. It's six if it sticks. There's some cheering on the sideline for Delaware. So there are multiple fouls on the plate. We'll take a listen. Holding defense number 17, pass interference, offense. Number 25, the penalty is offset. We're going to replay second down. Delaware's lined up to kick the extra point right now. There was celebration on Delaware's sideline. And so the officiating crew is now getting together. As it was described, they were going to replay that down, as we just heard in our broadcast. Delaware's lined up to kick the extra point. Palms to the sky with confusion. Coach Rocco out to the 20 to get an explanation. Well, that prior play that went for the hopeful touchdown was a bunch formation of the right. Amici runs a almost like a sluggo route at in and then up into the end zone. Kehoe climbed the pocket perfectly, kept his eyes downfield as he made that move in the pocket. Good protection, was able to complete the ball to Amici. Now we're having a long discussion on the field. Anthony Hayes is the referee. That's who you heard on the call. Offsetting penalties was the call. Chichi Amachi was wide open at the H and Blue Hens in the end zone, and Pat Kehoe was able to find him on a line. This is a nine-play, 49-yard drive thus far. And both teams still hands on hips. We might hear from Anthony Hayes again as he's now in the middle of the field. We hear whistles. So we're trying to get an explanation here. Matt, can we send it down to you on the sideline? We'll sit down to Matt and Janice. Did you actually see it right? Which seems like a pretty sound set of logic from the head coach. Thank you, Matt. Some technical difficulties. I don't know if we got the whole call there. So uh, as we try to figure everything out, it's our first game, too. We're trying to figure out this new booth situation. The officials are trying to figure out what they've got going on. We're trying to figure out some things, too. We're trying to get Matt on the air. Uh, but we'll, we'll get there. Matt, we're going to try it again. Matt, can we go back down to you? So... One of the biggest qualms right now for Danny Rocco is the initial explanation he received from the official was the opposite of what the call actually was. The, the calls were inversed. And his argument is, if you can't explain it to me right, are you sure you actually saw it right? And then after he got that point made, he was explaining it was a leverage thing and that they missed the call on top of that. So Danny Rocco, not a happy man. He got a bad explanation, and he thinks it was a bad call once he figured out what they finally flagged Delaware for. Man, I'm just happy to get you on the air. We we got it. Thank you, Matt, for hanging tight. Great explanation. Unfortunate for Delaware that the Paul the call seemingly reversing what was a touchdown for Chichi Omachi on this great drive that Delaware's having right now. What a pass it was by Pat Kehoe. And what I don't understand now is is why we're still just kind of standing around right now and why we have not replayed the down. So it looks like the chains are fixed. And now Delaware will have it. Second down and 15, replaying the down. 5.09, first quarter action, no score. Touchdown taken away. Keo in shotgun four. Rolls to his left. Pressure coming. Hit as he throws his Keo, and it falls incomplete. Target was Owen Tyler. Brian Cavacanti, we told you that we would have his name called a few times. The defensive player of the year in the MEAC preseason. He took a lick at on Pat Keo. Cavacante coming from that inside left linebacker position. It was a delayed blitz, and that's why it was so successful. The double line had split, started their blocking scheme. They did not have a blocker to the right. Cavacante gets a hit on Keo just as he released the ball. Keo in shotgun form now, third down and 15. Ball to 20 yard line for Keo. Trips to the right side. Dejon Lee is running back. DSU showing pressure. No score as Keo drops back. End zone again, this time for Coleman, incomplete. Great coverage that time by DSU. And David Bowman was the man back in coverage. 
Well, there was some contact down the field. The official is going to make the ruling that it didn't affect the play. I like Keo's throw right on top of Gene Coleman's hat. That's exactly where you should put that seam route, just slightly overthrown. So Delaware's field goal unit will come on. DSU missed on a 48-yard attempt, which started this drive for Delaware. This one for Jake Roth. Going to be from 38. Roth gets the kick up, certainly has the distance, and right on through for Jake Roth. Delaware on the board, it's 3-0. That's your timeout score on the Blue Hand Sports Radio Network. Yeah. Time leader in touchbacks, Jake Rawl put one between the uprights this time. He's almost done it on kickoff several times, but this time from 38 yards, a 12 play, 48 yard drive. A touchdown by Chichi Amachi was called back for offsetting penalties, and now Roth will kick this one away. I don't even know why they send return men out there when he is kicking the football. It bounces in the end zone, and DSU will have a touchdown. Let's set it down to the sideline, and Matt Jance. One of the things that made it interesting, Scott, that they called those penalties, the offsetting penalties that erased the touchdown from Delaware, is how physical they have let the defensive backs and receivers be on these first couple of drives. We've seen both teams take some deep shots, some 50-50 balls, and the officials really seem to let a lot of hand play go, and that's fine as long as you're consistent with it. That was the argument from the Delaware coaching staff during that last break. Let's pick a way we're going to call the game and stick with it. I think that'll make everybody happy especially the players on the field to know what they can get away with thank you Matt DSU on the field for the third time this evening Shane Smith the quarterback in shotgun form first and ten on their own 25 after the touchback passes high to an open receiver on the Delaware sideline it was Quanta Colley who had first down yardage at the 35 yard line but a misthrown ball by Shane Smith. Eric Day, the offensive coordinator for Delaware State, loves to employ the RPO, the run pass option, where the quarterback can read it initially with inside zone. He can run it himself on the belly read, or then he can throw it to a receiver. Well defended there by Henley again. DSU has negative one yard of total offense thus far today on six total plays. They'll give it to Brian Dallas, and he gets a positive yardage, but not much, up to the 26-yard line. Johnny Buchanan, the sophomore for Brick, New Jersey, with his first stop of the season. Johnny Buchanan playing inside linebacker was actually setting the edge there, and he did a great job of stepping up, taking on the pulling guard with his inside shoulder. The play bounces out to him, and then he's able to peel off and make the tackle. An outstanding play by a young linebacker that I think is going to be one of CAA's best. 3-0 Delaware, 420 and ticking, first quarter of action. DSU going left to right as we see it on the east stand. Shane Smith, the quarterback on third and eight. Ball marked at the DSU 27-yard line. Smith talking to his running back, Bryant Dallas, the senior, walks up to the line, and now we'll speak with Dwight Chavis, the center. Play clocks at four, needs to snap it. Delaware shifts, play clocks at one, he gets it off. Here comes pressure, Smith in trouble. Pass is caught in the backfield. Gonna have to run for it is Dallas to the 30, tiptoeing the sideline, 35 up to the 38 yard line. I think he got enough for the first down, he did. Nice balance by Brian Dallas to run after catch enough to pick up what they needed. Brian Dallas has excellent balance, did a nice job there of skirting the sideline. Delaware was in great position, but a nice cut block out on the edge. Free Dallas up to turn on the right side. A nice screen pass and a good call by Eric Day. First first down of the day for 
DSU on first down. The ball comes loose, but it was late. Momentum was already done at the 40-yard line. That was Dallas again. And they're going to keep continuing to go to their redshirt senior, who was second on the team with 349 rushing yards a season ago. A tackle was made by Drew Nichols, another guy we think is going to be a heck of a linebacker. Really like Nichols. He's very quick. He reads decisively. He then attacks. Clint Sinem has done a nice job of coaching up Buchanan and Nichols. Second and nine. Ball to the 41-yard line. Delaware showing some pressure. Smith going to throw. Sideline. Caught into Delaware territory at the 48. Down to the 45-yard line. And now DSU starting to move the football as Kedrick Whitehead and Justice Henley wrapped up Trey Gross. Delaware brought both inside linebackers. Nichols steps left to draw the guard. And the Buchanan blitz is behind him. He got through. But Smith was able to exit the ball just in time to that second level. A nice throw. Five plays thus far on the drive at ESU into Delaware territory. Give is to Bryant Dallas. And tackle made by Dom Cavato, the redshirt sophomore from Erie, Pennsylvania. Game of three or four for DSU on first down. 225 and ticking. First quarter action. Delaware up 3 0. And the Hornets in Hens territory. Cavato does a nice job of getting his hand placement in and working down the line and then sheds his blocker. Buchanan also went in that play. Very active from that second level. Smith operating on a shotgun again. Brian Dallas is the running back to his right side. He checks with the sideline. Two wide receivers to the near side. And Dallas will shift from right to left of Smith. One wide receiver split out to left. Shotgun snap goes to Smith. He'll float one. Sideline. And turning around to get it was Kwanakali, the junior from Staten Island, New York. Into the red zone goes DSU down at the 13-yard line. Collie's a nice receiver. He's also excellent in special teams, running a fade route. Just got good position. That was a superb throw by Smith, who placed it just on the outside shoulder. Not a backside throw, but a wonderful ball placement down the field. First time in the red zone tonight for DSU. They had a drive start at the 30 after a recovered fumble, but didn't gain any yards and missed a field goal. Now in scoring distance once again are the Hornets. Here's Bryant Downs working his way left. Didn't get much, maybe two and a half. Noah Plack, the red shirt freshman, his first stop. It's nice to see Noah Plack working down from that safety position. Delaware counts on their safeties. Whitehead and Plack to make a lot of plays. The corners are edge setters, sending it back inside of those two safeties who are very capable downhill tacklers. 60 seconds left in the first quarter. Delaware a 3 0 lead after a 38 yard field goal from Jake Roth. The SU trying to take a lead. Give is to Bryant, this time running right, staying in the middle of the field goal. Brought down after another pickup of two, two and a half. Looked like Tim Poindexter, the redshirt junior, came in for the stop. Good to see Poindexter playing. He had injury last year, did not play. He was almost ready to get back in at the end of the season, but Delaware decided to hold him out. He's another downhill player. Both he and Whitehead were right there at the point of attack. Nice job by our safeties. Third down and four for DSU from the head seven-yard line. Trips to the right side. Smith will roll that way. Pumps, throws, and it's high and incomplete. Looking for the transfer, Charles Peeler, in the end zone. And we'll see the field goal unit once again. Jose Romo Martinez coming back out. Nichols did a nice job there of setting the edge. Though he got cut, he was able to pressure Smith to throw that ball just a little early. I think Smith would have liked to have set his feet, but a nice job there by Nichols, not only setting the edge, but getting the right leverage to get in Smith's line of vision. This will be a 25-yard try. Jose's brother, Fidel, will hold. This one, a chippy for a guy that made 8 of 11 a season ago. The redshirt sophomore from California has it up. And it's through. We're tied at three with 18 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll take a break on 94.7 WDSD.
goal from 25 yards for Romo Martinez. And we're not at three. Delaware returning the kick for the second time today. From the five-yard line, Dejan Lee takes it. 15 before contact, now 20. Juke move at the 23-yard line, being swarmed as he gets to the 24-yard line. And Delaware will take over on offense. But going back to that last drive by DSU, Bill, they were uh, stuck. Uh, back in DSU deep in their territory and there was a screen pass by to Bryant Dallas He made a few guys miss tiptoe at the sideline kept the drive alive and then they got down the field 11 plays later a field goal to tie things up. Well Smith has been the difference even though he's only completed three He's been on target deep and it was a nice screen pass call that you just described and Dallas did a really nice job there of getting down the sideline for about an extra 15 yards So Delaware will make some adjustments here, but I do like in general the way the back ends playing they're holding up They've done some nice job in individual coverage likely the final play of the first quarter Kehoe with a pass to picks, he'll run to the 30, 35, up to the 36-yard line. A first down for Delaware to take us into the second quarter. Niebauer with the stop, and that'll stop action for just a moment as we head to quarter number two, all knotted at three apiece. We'll take a break on 94.7 WDSD. Five yards, and he has been distributing that rock. I love that about Pat. Uh, he does a really nice job of keeping all his receivers, tight ends, and running backs happy in the downfield attack. Anytime you can spread the ball around, not only vertically but horizontally to different receivers, it just makes you more difficult to cover. And he's done a nice job of climbing the pocket. I think he's developing a really nice simpatico with Eric Pitts, who I really like. Uh, the young man, mother played the ba college basketball, Florida International. He plans to uh, major in physical therapy. He's going to be a good one, but I like his running ability after the catch. He's got good vision, is willing to cut across the field if possible, and then as they split up the field when necessary. Delaware coming back out of the field for first and 10. Ball at their own 36-yard line. And Cavacanzi, as we went to break, the best player for Delaware State's defense, maybe the best player in the conference. He was slow to join his teammates on the sideline, limping a bit. He is on the field. We'll keep an eye out on him. No reason for a Newark urgent care injury stoppage. First down and 10 to start the second quarter. Keo gets the snap. Give us to Robinson. Running hard on the left side. Sheds two before he stopped along the sideline. And out of bounds he goes at the 39-yard line. It was Antoine Kinsey, the redshirt freshman, that got to him first. He sheds, too, because of his bulk, the fact that he drops his inside shoulder and keeps his feet moving. He's a very difficult guy to tackle in close space or in the open space as well. A good runner in both areas. Second down and eight. Second play of the second quarter. Three to three is the count with Keon shotgun for him. Two wide receivers to his right. Pass is caught by Robinson, but all over him reading the play was Isaiah Small. He had 18 tackles last season, all of last year. He's got three already tonight. Isaiah Small is from an excellent high school program, highly of Miami Lakes. He diagnosed that perfectly. That's the third time we've gone to that left side swing pass to our running back and unfortunately so far none have been successful after the loss it's third down and 10 Delaware two of four on third downs tonight score three all Keo and shotgun form two wide receivers to his right Robinson the running back Keo throws on the run what a catch by Pitts but he had to extend to grab it and he fell to the turf after losing his balance at the 40, if he stayed on his feet, likely room for the speedster to get up for first down yardage, but he exuded so much energy to make the grab that he lost his foot. And he had to throw it high, did Pacquiao, because there was some pressure in his face. He had to have a long arm over the top. I thought Pitts did a great job of just securing the ball. He's got a great catch radius, just could not get his feet down underneath him. Punt coming from Jake Roth, doing it all, kicking off, punting, and he's already had a field goal. Beautiful punt is caught by DSU at the 18-yard line. 
A 42-yard punt for Jake Roth. What can, can't, it's like high school again when the, the quarterback is uh, also the punter, also the kickoff, also the field goal kicker, and uh, Jake Roth doing a little bit of everything. Nick Pritchard again, not available for tonight's game. A great leg, 4-4 hang time. He's able to kick it end over end, which is that rugby style the Australians are using, also the regular spiral and call for corner. What I like about Jake Roth talking to him in the summer is how hard he likes to work in the weight room. He has a 25-minute warm-up routine that Chris Stewart's worked with him on that he does prior to every practice and every game. You can see that's really proven to be beneficial for his leg. A wonderful leg strength, a great leg swing. He's a big guy. He's got a good frame. He's 210 pounds for our kicker slash punter. First down and 10 to start the drive. 13 Oh seven, second quarter clock, three to three is the count. Smith pumps, will tuck, he'll run to the 20, jab step there, and down he goes at the 25-yard line. Drew Nichols was there, Justice Henley in on the stop as well. Delaware rushed four and dropped seven. That's why the coverage was so good down the field, enabled Smith to tuck the ball and run for some additional yardage. It was a flag back at the 13-yard line looking like a hold. Offense, number 66, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Caden Crawford, the right tackle for DSU. That penalty, the second of the day for DSU. Remember, offsetting penalties earlier in this contest took off, took a six, took a touchdown off the board. Crawford, the best offensive lineman for Delaware State, was matched up against Frank Burton. Frank Burton has a great takeoff. He's got wonderful hand action. Coach Beelan has done a wonderful job of working with his footwork and his hand placement for a pass rush. Five-yard penalty makes it first and 15. And Brian Dallas has room to run all the way back up to the 24-yard line. Big run for the senior, the biggest of the day, and they get back that yard and say loss with the penalty. That was an inside zone run that starts right, but Dallas has vision and footwork to weave that back to the left side of the offensive line. Delaware is doing a great job of scraping, but there was no edge player there to account for him coming off to the backside. 15-yard pickup. And it's Dallas again looking for space. None there. Drew Nichols in on the action again. When your defensive front resets the line of scrimmage two or three yards into the offensive backfield it allows your linebackers to pick their fits that time Nichols did a great job of finding that fit runs through from left to right to make the tackle for a loss third down three yards to go a long three call it four scoreboard so in three that's four for DSU one of four on third down conversions today are the Hornets out of shotgun form with trip to his right is Smith, one wide receiver to the left. Man-to-man -man coverage, Henley on him. Smith trying to run, looking for space. He has enough. Ball comes loose. He was down at the 30-yard line. So a first down pickup on the run by Smith. He got a shoulder into him. I believe it was Cam Kitchen who came in with the shoulder, jarring the ball loose, but Smith was down. And he did get first down yardage on the run. Delaware does not blitz a lot, Scott, but that time they brought the safety, Kendrick Whitehead, off the right side of Delaware's defensive line. He got up the field just a little too far, allowed Smith to cut underneath him. Second, third down conversion of the day for DSU, keeps the drive alive. Dallas running the right side, has a hole, splits two Delaware defenders to get across the 35 and down at the 36-yard line. And Nigel Hill, one of the captains of this defense, makes his first stop. Dallas continues to impress me with his ability to find the, the right lane to attack. And that usually means he has patience. He's a veteran runner playing behind an offensive line that's pretty big. They have everybody at 300 pounds or greater up front. And right now they're doing a nice job of not only resetting the line of scrimmage, but staying with their blocks against an excellent defensive front. 10-33 in ticking, second quarter. And I believe this was Richard Harris for the first time. They've been going to Brian Dallas all game long. Richard Harris, a senior, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Kitchen with the tackle. Nice job there by Kitchen, not only to set the edge, but to work off the block. That was started out as a power play to the left, but it was so well diagnosed by Delaware that it forced the ball back to the right. Kitchen in perfect position, playing his technique perfectly. Ten minutes left in the second quarter. Third down and three. Can DSU convert another one? Ball on their own 36-yard line. Smith is the quarterback. Shotgun snap. QB keep up the middle. He will run for the second first down of this drive. Big 
hole. A nice job setting him up. Richard Harris, the running back, and a nice block for his QB. Delaware State has done a nice job of cutting the second level of Delaware. That time, Drew Nichols was in perfect position, but he gets cut. Just got to learn to play off of that, step back, get your hands down on the blocker, and then be able to step out of that. Delaware State utilizing that technique fairly well to free up their runner, that Smith. First down for the Hornets. Staying in shotgun and Smith trips to the right side. He'll look that way, pump in a miscommunication as he threw that one to no one in particular on the Delaware sideline. It was a miscommunication between he and uh, Brian Dallas, I believe, out of the backfield. An incomplete pass for Smith. Smith now 3 of 10 in this contest. His counterpart, Pat Keogh, is 9 of 12. That was an RPO, a run pass option to the right. They faked the zone. He had a bubble from number three of the trips and then decided not to take any of that and throw the ball down the field to a well-covered Delaware State receiver. Two wide receivers on both sides for DSU as they line up second and 10. 3-3 three, three is the score. Jake Roth with a 38-yard field goal for Delaware, a 25-yard field goal for DSU. Smith all day to toss this one to whoever he wants. Down the field has a man diving for it and caught at the 20-yard line. It's Jordan Hanna with the Hornets' biggest pickup of the day. 39 yards on the toss. Only four pass rushers. Nice job by that Delaware State front to hold them off. Smith gets a quick drop, and he's able to complete the long pass. Now the Hornets going quickly. It's Harris, the big bruising fullback. He'll get a bruise as he was met by two Delaware linebackers. Johnny Buchanan was there. Sal Morrow also in on the stop to slow things down a bit after this defense got beat over the middle. Well, a lot of offensive coordinators love to go quick after a big play. It's almost like a sudden change capability. That time, Delaware was in the perfect spot to stop the play. Sets up a second and long. Second and nine. Ball at the 19-yard line for DSU after the huge pickup to Jordan Hanna. Smith. Give us to the running back. Charging through and barreling over a Delaware defender is Richard Harris. And he goes down at the 13-yard line. A pickup of six on second down. Should be third and about three for DSU. Kendrick Whitehead on the stop. They are unleashing Richard Harris for the first time on this drop. Well, Harris is a big-boned, big-bodied running back who has a low center of gravity. He's really bringing that pad level to bear. Delaware's got to get underneath him and run their feet a little bit better defensively. Delaware will try to hold DSU to another red zone field goal attempt. If they can stop him on third down, toss to the end zone, incomplete, out of bounds. It'll be fourth down and three, and we'll see another red zone field goal try. Bending, not breaking this young Delaware defense so far today with 7.46 on the second quarter clock. Del State a chance to take their first lead. Yes, but I was a little surprised at the play call. They've been running the ball so well, I thought they might try to attack with the zone read again and then maybe go for it on fourth down. When you're the underdog on the road, you ought to be a little bit more aggressive in your play calling. It's be a 30-yard try for Jose Roma Martinez, who knocked one through from 25 on the Hornets' last possession. This one good as well. First lead of the game for Delaware State. It's 6-3 to three with 7 41 left in the second quarter. That's your timeout score as we take a break on 94.7 WDSD and iHeartRadio. For Delaware Lottery, want to play? Uh, again, we said it during the drive. Delaware allowing DSU in the red zone, but not allowing six. And that's a great sign for this young defense, to be able to give up some ground and then hold tough in the red zone. There could be nothing better. I thought that was a win for Delaware there to only give up three after a really good momentum change by Delaware State with some hard running by Harris. Hands will go left to right as we see it in the East stands. It's a short kick, and that's a penalty flag thrown as well. Dejan Lee sprinting at the 25, some contact spinning, getting all the way to the 30-yard line. He took Mohamed Tiam for a five-yard ride. We'll see what the penalty call is coming up. It's going to be offsides on the left side of the coverage team. They were at least two yards in advance of the 30. Offsides, kicking team, number 26, five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's David Bowman, and we'll send it down to the sideline now. I am Matt Janis. Hey, guys, Dan Rocco, always, you know, a little bit of a, an idiosyncrasy type of guy. He's always worried going into a game, but especially on the opener. So many 
things that you can't control. You try to prepare your team. You're not sure where they are. One of the things he was talking about coming into this game was tackling, and he was frustrated. He and the coaching staff over on the sideline, the last two drives, a couple of third downs, the screen play two drives ago, they called it out. They knew the play, couldn't get him down, and then that third down run early in that drive that got Dell State going with a little bit of momentum. They're playing well. They just got to finish plays. Thank you, Matt. And on the first play of this drive that starts at the 36-yard line after the penalty, a give to Dejan Lee, bouncing the outside left, getting up to the 40-yard line. Again, a gain of four on first down for Dejan Lee. But that's something that, that Matt brings up is this is the first time both of these teams are wrapping up and tackling hard. You obviously don't do that against your own teammates during camp. Well, tackling is so limited at the high school, college, and pro level that the games are really the only time you're going to find that extra oomph when you get in there and lay a guy down. So good point. Keo throwing open. Amachi tipped away at the last moment. Recovering to knock it away was DeAndre Blue Eli. He covered a lot of ground while that ball was on the air. Now that was a terrific double move there by Amici out. Goes in and then breaks out to the flag at about a 45-degree angle. The ball just hung in the air a little long. I actually thought Pat threw it at the right time. It was just such a long pass that allowed Delaware State's D-back to recover. A nice play by them, but a nice double move there by Amici, who's really shown me something early on. And that was Cavacante with the pressure on Keo. He said he was limping early. There's a flag thrown on the play by the, on the officials back at the 40-yard line. As Delaware one in motion, 6.56. Second Eagle quarter. substitution on the defense. Five yards, replay, third down. So fourth penalty today for DSU. It'll help Delaware out. It'll still be third down as it looked like Mohamed Tiam, the sophomore for New Jersey, was late coming off of the field. So what was third down and six is now going to be third down and one. As we're just under seven minutes in the second quarter, Delaware trailing six to three, trying to put a drive together. That can't make... Mark, Mark James, the defensive coordinator, Delaware State, very happy. It was going to be third and six. Now third and one gives Delaware a lot of options Time here. Out. Delaware State. And now Delaware State, some more confusion, trying to get the right personnel on the field. They'll burn their second timeout of the first half. Well, we have a break in the action. I want to tell our listeners that this spring, I joined the Hocassin Athletic Club. It was one of my family's favorite decisions. It's more than just a fitness center. We feel part of the community there. I was able to finally find a gym where I felt comfortable working out. Plus, I would use their sauna and steam room after exercising. My wife and I made memories with our son, Ryan, all summer long in the indoor and outdoor pool. The place is absolutely fan. Fantastic. See what I mean by visiting HACHealthClub.com today. That's the Hokesson Athletic Club. Breaking the action after the timeout by DSU. It's third down and one. Delaware down 6-3. to three. Not a position that many thought the Hens would be in at this point in the first half. Delaware State's defense has done a nice job of holding up against the run game. They've diagnosed the swing passes. They've played fairly decently in the back end. But offensively, they've been able to win the time of possession battle here in the second quarter, keeping Delaware's offense off the field. So they need to get a couple first downs to get in rhythm again. Someone forgot to keep the dance team off the field. Both teams are on the field ready to snap the football. And the uh, Delaware dance team is... Not in a hurry. Wonderful performance, I'm sure. Uh, but both teams are kind of staring, waiting for the dance team to finish their routine. As there was a timeout by DSU, uh, don't see the red hat on the field, which usually is an indicator that we're not ready to start. Everyone seems like we're ready to go, except the dance team. They are. They practice hard this off season. They're going to get their dancing. <laughs> Let's send out to Matt Janis while the dance team finishes up. Matt. Hey, one of the things it seems like Delaware's doing a pretty good job of offensively really mixing the tempos in terms of getting to the line of scrimmage. And we've seen Delaware State a couple of times get away with it with some late substitution packages. And there has been some confusion down there. Delaware not substituting so they don't have to hold up the play between plays. And Dell State late getting bodies in and out. And consequently, some frustration over there on the Hornets sideline. Not necessarily with the coaching staff at their players, but more with the players to the coaching staff asking them to signal a little bit sooner who's coming on and going off. Thank you, Matt. Dance routine over. Players back on the field. Delaware trying to go quickly and sneak a yard for a first down. It was third down and one, and they did get it. 
So after standing and staring at the, I believe, national champion dance team, so I will say that for quite some time, Delaware lined up quickly and got a keeper for the first day. They came out of a short huddle, a quick huddle. They run a quick snap behind Lutz and Farinelli to the left. Kehoe, a big man, able to drive forward to get the first down. Kehoe back in shotgun form. Will Knight, we're seeing for the first time as he stands behind Kehoe. He'll roll out, set his feet, fire, looking for Bryce DeMalley, his third catch of the day, and Delaware into DSU territory at the 36th. Bryce DeMalley, the only player returning from last year's team that caught a touchdown pass, and I think he's going to catch a whole lot more. The youngster, just his sophomore, showing his hands early on. Delaware going quickly to line up, first and 10 at the DSU 36-yard line, lobbing down the field and incomplete, but pass interference, I believe, is going to be the call against Devin Smith. Well, Smith was in good position. The ball was slightly thrown behind him. It may have been a back shoulder read by Pat Pass interference, Leo. defense, number 17, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. But I like the ball placement by Keo. He saw that it was man coverage. He saw a man turn, throws it slightly behind, results in the P.I. Delaware State's defense, if they're having a problem now, it's getting penalized. Five penalties now for DSU, just one for Delaware. Besides that offsetting penalty that took away the touchdown to Chichi Omachi early on. Keo is 10 of 14, 85 yards throwing thus far on the day. Six minutes, seven seconds left of the second quarter. Delaware trying to retake the lead. They're down six to three. Coleman goes in motion from right to left. Keo keeps it. Has room to run. He's going to walk into the end zone and Delaware is back on top. What a terrific block by left tackle David Kroll pulling a big speed sweep to the left with Coleman. Keo reads it perfectly, pulls it. Kroll Knocks down the left side of the Delaware State line. Allows Keo to go untouched in the end zone. A great play call by Jared Ambrose. What a play. What a read by Pat Keo. And who thought the first score of the season would be a run of 21 yards by the quarterback. No one was within 10 yards of him as he cruised in the end zone in Delaware. Retakes the lead. Extra point coming up. Jake Roth boots it through, and it's 10 to 6 Delaware. 601 second quarter. We'll take our final timeout of the first half on 94.7 WDSD. Quarterback Pat Keo, and now the kickoff. Delaware State takes it up to the 13-yard line, and you can hear some of the ruckus because Matt Palmer was there to make some contact with DSU. Didn't bring him down, but slowed him down. He was shooting like a cannon down the field to find the DSU return man and slowed him up at the 14-yard line. How about that drive by Delaware to retake the lead after going down 6-3? to three? Pat Kehoe had a lot to do with that. A couple of great throws. DeMalley on the crossing pattern. But I love the fact that Delaware's got their quarterback involved in the run game. He makes it difficult for the defense because there's another player they've got to account for. Typically, you're not worried about the quarterback running, especially a man the size of Pat Kehoe. He's doing a great job. A wonderful block there by Kroll, as I mentioned. Delaware using their tackles to pull a lot here in their zone game. 
Here comes Buchanan chasing the new quarterback. We'll get to that in a moment. Pass is caught up to the 30-yard line, and we're getting our first look at Tylek Bethia, the true freshman from Brooklyn. They love this guy. There is a flag on the play. Offense, number 66, five-yard penalty, replay, first down. Penalty went against Caden Crawford. That's his second penalty of the day. So it negates what was a gain up to the 30-yard line. And DSU going backwards with now their sixth penalty of the game. But back to Bethia. He was the all-time leading passer in the state of New York, breaking Mike Paulus's record, six more yards, and the former number one pro-style quarterback in the country. Remember that name from William & Mary? years ago they liked with Theo we thought we might see him today and here we are Brian Dallas with the give on first and 15 he goes nowhere Cam Kitchen with the tackle for loss but Theo's got great size as you were mentioning he's a long armed thrower he's got to work on getting the ball out a little bit sooner but he has excellent execution obviously comes in with quite a portfolio of passing game they have a lot of young quarterbacks down at Delaware State I have a feeling this was predetermined that Probably they were going to yeah. let Smith go for three or four series and then bring Bethia in and see how he was going to do before halftime. Smith threw for 94 yards, also ran for nine, picked up a couple of first downs on that last drive. So I do think you're right, Bill. I think this must have been part of the script for Rod Milstead. Under five minutes we go. DSU with the football backed up in their own territory. Here comes pressure for the freshman, but he completes the pass for first down yardage to the 27. What poise by the rookie as he tossed it across the field under pressure to Trey Gross. We talked about mental toughness. Mathia able to hang in there. He had Kitchen coming from his right and Ashworth from his left. He had two big men right in his face. Kitchen delivers his head right as the ball is thrown. A very clean play by Kitchen. I like Kitchen's activity. On first down, give us to Dallas. Changes direction and is slammed to the turf by Noah Black. And Scott and Matt, that's what you need your safety to be able to do. He's got to fill that additional gap on the weak side. They're running that zone cutback. Delaware takes away all the lanes to the left side. Plaque's got to fit in there on the weak side. He did so. It was a perfectly diagrammed and red play by Noah Plaque. Noah <laughs> Plaque played linebacker in high school. He knows how to give a lick in. And Brian Dallas has got to still be sore as he gets the handoff on second down and six. Gets a yard, maybe less than that back to the line of scrimmage it'll be third down and six as Kedrick Whitehead was in on the tackle as was Drew Nichols. Whitehead nice play in Nichols but really the play was made by Anthony Toro who's in playing that edge defender did a great job there of taking on his man and forcing the ball away from him. Third down as we get under 330 in the first half. Delaware leads 10 to 6. DSU needs six yards. There was a little bit of bumping, but no flags as Nigel Hill, solid coverage in the middle of the field. Pass scores high and incomplete, and DSU's punt unit will come onto the field. But they had to get rid of that ball quickly. Cam Kitchen again doing a great job of ripping and running. He's got a late swim move. He's really developed some wonderful pass rush techniques, making himself much more versatile, known as a big run stopper and a down-the-line skimmer. Now he's added that extra dimension to his defense and I really like the maturity of Kitchen. Jordan Townsend going to get his second try. He dropped a punt his first time out which gave DSU the football at the Hens 30 yard line. The Hornets were unable to score after the turnover but he's back to return. The true freshman will run for this one. Backpedaling catches at the 20 yard line. Takes a few steps backwards. Now has room at the 30. Space at the 35. Running wide at the 40. Midfield for Towson. The freshman near the sideline. Shuffles his feet and steps out of bounds in DSU territory at the 37 yard line. A 47 yard return for the Rocky. Towson had to back up. Caught that ball over his head. Not necessarily the exact proper fundamentals but what I love was he went immediately vertically and the great punt returners all understand that then he broke out to the wide side of the field a wonderful return I love the fact that coach Rocco and coach Legg, the special teams coach continued to show confidence in the young player to allow him to return again after the fumble he did a great job there setting an excellent field position for Delaware's offense they'll mark him in fact at the 33 yard line and Keogh goes under center. Tyler, the fullback behind him. I Foreign Lee stands behind Tyler. Some momentum after the Townsend return. 
Here comes Lee, bouncing, breaking tackles to the outside, staying on his feet and pushed out of bounds. Lee broke three tackles, an excellent block by Gilmore, the right guard on an inside power play. Lee made a lot of that on his own with great leg action, terrific balance, and just the will to get it done. I love the way Lee runs. A nine-yard pickup for Dejon Lee. We saw that last year. He was the leading rusher for the Hens last season as a redshirt sophomore. 22-year-old from Springfield, Virginia. Second down and one. Keo rolling. Off his back foot, tossing for Coleman, who's under it. He caught the football. Did he stay in bounds? No. Shoved out at the four-yard line. And was... Keo felt a little bit of pressure from his blind side. He had to sidestep a little bit, and that's why the ball carried just slightly out of bounds. A pretty good throw under duress. Coleman with a nice job of tracking the ball on a long throw situation. Just a tough play there for Delaware, just out of bounds by about a half a step. Good coverage that time by Jawan Granger, making sure that Coleman could not land in bounds. It's third down and a yard. Single back, double tight end set. Damali goes in motion. Lee does not get the give. Keo keeps it, throws to Tyler, who catches it, and into the end zone he goes. The captain, Owen Tyler, from the captain, Pat Keo, and the Hens are up 10. Tyler from the right side tight end runs a crossing pattern did a great job of making himself free from the safety Pat Kehoe gets hit right as he releases it has the gumption to stand in there and take a hit that's what I love about Pat he's so tough minded back there he never steps back he's always working off his front foot a terrific throw and catch Delaware up 16 to 6 after the 24 yard toss from Pat Keogh to Owen Tyler, captain to captain, and now Jake Roth with the extra point. It is no good, so a miss on the PAT by Roth. A three-play, 33-yard drive, took just 47 yards, took just 47 seconds, and it all started with the huge return from the freshman, the true freshman, Jordan Townsend. And how about that for the rookie to drop his first try and then the second time around, going out there with the same confidence and getting the big return to spark the head. When you're a punt returner, kickoff returner, just like a safety in a corner, you've got to have a short memory. You've got to make some mistakes once in a while. But what the really great ones do is they file it away, they figure out what happened, then they just get ready to make the next play, and that's what he did. What I liked about his style was as he backtracked, he was able to get his eyes down the field to see how the coverage was developing. He starts directly up the field and then makes that break to the left side. He got some nice blocks from his return team, but his speed once he got to the outside was excellent. And I thought it started with his vision and his understanding to go north-south. Jake Roth just missed the extra point. We'll kick this one away. Two DSU Hornets back to return. Roth rarely allows a return. 75 touchbacks coming into the season a school record this one returnable on purpose and out of the end zone it goes to the 10 15 yard line sprinting his point of to the 20 and he's gonna be wrapped up there there is a flag back at the 35 yard line possibly a late hit from delaware there are two flags on the field so we see one at the 24 yard line the runner got to about the 21 and the referees getting together to talk this one over. We'll hear the call. During the return, personal foul, late hit, number 54. Holding, number 15, White. 15-yard penalty, first down. He didn't say who the first team was. Well, the late hit has to be on <laughs> Delaware. The hold's got to be on them. Let's send it down to Matt Janis, who is on the sideline. A little bit of confusion there, but it ends up going the way of Delaware. But you have to love the toughness there from Pat Keogh on that last throw. He had Bynum bearing down on him and just hung in there and delivered a strike. We talked about it coming into the game, wanting to see Pat Keogh kind of take that next step, see more of what we witnessed from him in that Towson game where he can be not just a game manager, not just a good leader, but somebody that can make plays and make things happen from the quarterback position. He has certainly done that here in this second quarter. 
dropping dimes and doing it under heavy duress, and his teammates all dapping him up on the sideline afterwards. He's 11 of 16, 109 yards is Keo. Thank you, Matt. And now another whistle as DSU is going to line up deep in their territory, starting this drive at their own four-yard line. Two minutes, eight seconds left in quarter number two, and the heads up 16 to 6 after the 24-yard toss from Kyoto and Tyler. But Theo is the quarterback again. Passes high and nearly intercepted. It went through the hands of the tight end Isaiah Williams. Diving for it was Noah Plack, and he almost picked it off in the red zone. Now by throwing on first down, now Delaware can utilize their timeouts. They, could, they had three. They could have stopped the clock, but now Delaware State's not going to make Delaware use all their timeouts, so they'll have one for offense as well. On second down, the give is to Bryant Dallas, who's had an impressive game thus far. A lot of carries, a lot of work early on. He gets up to the 11-yard line. Third down and manageable, maybe three yards for DSU as the clock ticks under two minutes. As we look at Bryant Dallas' stat line, 15 carries now for up over 40 yards. And Danny Rocco's not going to use his timeout here because Delaware State's so close to a first down. But Delaware State probably shouldn't be in a hurry here. They should let the clock work and allow Delaware to force a timeout or not have as much time left. On third down and three, DSU's going to be short. They're going to lose a yard to the 10. Great pressure up front by the hands. And now Delaware will use that timeout. Stopping the clock. It's still ticking. Rocco wanted a few seconds to go. I thought he was signaling for a timeout. He does. Clock still ticking now at a minute 15. Timeout. It was fourth way. down and three. I thought I saw the signal earlier on oh, with Rocco out Rocco to the uh, officiating right crew. Uh, but I saw that at about maybe nine, ten seconds ago. They do mark it at 115. So the timeout is taken by the hens to get some time on the clock. Back, DSU, fourth down and three. And the hens, they only took what 47 49 seconds on that last drive certainly an opportunity with another nice return for jordan towson even without a big return they're going to be set up in good territory to put some points on the board prior to heading into the locker room at the break we'll hear from head coach danny rocco before he heads into the locker room matt janice will get his thoughts we'll ask him one question as he heads into the locker room and get his thoughts on the first half then we'll hear from benny Pinella. he's got first half highlights scores from around college football and the ibew local 313 halftime report coming up kicking out of the end zone will be the punter fidel romo martinez brother of the field goal kicker jose and on fourth down and three, out of the end zone, here comes a punt for DSU. They'll snap it from the 11-yard line in their own territory, down by 10. Just getting it away was Romo Martinez. Fair catch this time by Townsend. And a 43-yard punt makes a Delaware football at their own 45-yard line to start. 108 on the first half clock in Delaware after going down 6-3 to three is reeled off. 13 on answer. This is where the tempo will come in and the ability to have two timeouts remaining for the offense. They can run a lot of different stuff here. We'll look for them to be quickly no huddle after a catch or anything short of a first down. You've got to know what stops the clock in this situation. So this is a, like a two-minute drill with one minute to go. Pat Keo, we mentioned his stat line, 11 of 16 thus far, 109, a touchdown toss to Owen Tyler. He's got three wide receivers, two to his right, one to his left is Pitts. Pitts already with three catches for 34 yards on the day. The running back is lead next to Keo. Dropping back is the quarterback, throwing high over the head of Gene Coleman, an incomplete middle of the field. And when you have good coverage down the field, that's the right thing to do. Throw it away. Throw it long where nobody can make a play. You still have two timeouts. Live to play another down. Look for Delaware here maybe to run an inside screen or a draw play. Christian Johnson put some pressure on Keo that time. Interesting as we look down, the top defensive player for DSU, Brian Cavacanti, is stretching on the sideline. Second down and 10. Ball still on the hens 45-yard line. Hens pick up the blitz. Keo. Fires to Coleman, and it's high over his head again. Good coverage that time. Once again, Jawain Granger. I've said that two or three times in this contest. Granger having a good day of coverage on Gene Coleman. Pat Kia was forced that time to sidestep to his right and then step back up into the pocket. Pretty good pressure there by Delaware State. They brought six in that situation. They're bringing some blitzes. This is when you might want to throw another screen or possibly a draw play. 
56 seconds left in the second quarter. Delaware up 16 to 6. Gale stands in shotgun form. One wide receiver is Pitts to his left. Two wide receivers to the right. Coleman and Amachi. Kia surveys the field. Steps up in the pocket. Now pressure comes and down he goes. A sack by Christian Johnson, who led all defensive line with 33 tackles a season ago for the Hornets. Gets the first sack of the game. A little surprised Delaware State isn't using a timeout here, and they should. They've got one remaining. They do use the timeout, so the Hornets will stop the clock now at 36 seconds on the second quarter clock. So if I'm DSU, I've got to be happy being only down by 10. Certainly a large underdog in this contest. Missed opportunities twice in the red zone, having to settle for a field goal. Uh, Delaware, though, after a slow start, going down 6-3, to three, picked it up on the last possession offensively. This time stalling, however, after now we're going to see a three and out. Well, I like the way Delaware adjusted there with their long passing game. Kehoe being able to step up in the pocket on the drives. The punt return, a huge play. So the special teams, a big factor. Good coverage, the last kickoff. I think Jake Roth, both times that he hasn't kicked it for a touchback, has decided to kick it just short to allow Delaware's coverage team. Smart play by Roth, who's got an outstanding leg. So some really good things going on. Delaware State, I agree with you. He's got to be pretty happy. Their defense has held up decently. Their offense has moved the ball at times. They just need to be more consistent, and they've got to find an answer for that Delaware pressure with Kitchen, Burton, and others. Jake Roth, the punter tonight. Nick Pritchard not available for the season opener. Will be available this season. Not tonight, though, for the Hens. Jake Roth gets this one away to Keenan Black, the backup quarterback last year for DSU. Catches at the 17-yard line. Starts right, reverses field, loses his footing. It was Andrew Pawlowski who was there first. Didn't bring him down, but got enough of his hip uh, that he lost his balance. A 45-yard punt by Jake Roth, not on the return. Although Keenan went right to left, didn't go forward. And now Hornets will start their final drive of the first half with 25 seconds left from their own 18-yard line. I thought Pawlowski did a great job there. What you want to do when you have either kickoff or punt coverage you want to get down there, not overrun the ball, and you want the ball to go to the sideline, and he did that. Even though he didn't make the tackle, he forced the returner to not go vertically like Towson did for his great return, but to go to the side, and then Delaware's great coverage is able to get there and tackle him. Hornets going to take a knee, bring this one into the locker room, down by 10. 16-6 to six is the count. And both teams going to head into the locker room. After 30 minutes of action, Delaware 16, Hornets of DSU six points on two field goals. And we are just in a moment going to get our head coach, Danny Rocco, Matt Janice. your footing in that second period yeah well we knew that they would play really hard and uh i thought they'd play well i know they got uh good as the year went on last year we did not start well here today and uh but we got some momentum there in the second quarter i uh, had a couple really nice scoring drives uh, hooked up on a couple deep shots down the field thought the punt return was a really good play uh to give us some momentum and some confidence so we're in a dog fight uh I said, you know, expect to play the full 60 minutes, and we better be ready to do that tonight. Good luck, second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you guys. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Coach Rocco. And Delaware, a 10-point lead as they head into the break. 16-6 is the count. Delaware on top. We'll take a timeout. We come back. It's the Blue Edge Halftime Report presented by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 313, and its local contractors. We'll have highlights, the news, and a scoreboard update from Benny Pinella. Then we'll have a live stats back at the stadium before we kick things away to start the second half. Delaware up 10 at the break. We'll be back in a moment on 94.7 WDSD and iHeartRadio.
We'll need to see what happens to him. Yeah, he didn't play.
Stadium, where the hands are up 16 to 6 at the break. Big thanks to Benny Padella for taking care of our IBEW Local 313 halftime report. I'm Scott Klanskin alongside Bill Harmon. Matt Janis down on the sideline, and we are in the Dash In broadcast booth, brought to you by Dash In Lifting Life's Journeys. Let's get to these first half stats as the Delaware leads it by 10. Pat Keogh, 11 of 18, throwing the football 109 yards and one touchdown. He was sacked once. Pat Keogh also leading rusher. He had a 21-yard run uh, for a touchdown. That's the longest run of the day. Lost a couple on a sack. Andre Robinson, three carries for 14 yards. Dejan Lee, six carries for nine yards. Receiving, Keogh is spreading out the football. Five receivers have caught passes. Demali three for 38. Pitts three for 34. Tyler two for 28. Robinson two for negative five. And Amachi one of 16 also had a touchdown catch that was called back due to offsetting penalties. Delaware State on the offensive side. Four of 20 for Shane Smith, the starter. Bathia came in and went one of three for 18 yards, 94 yards through the air for Smith. Dallas are running back. A lot of carries in that first half. 16 already for the senior from Georgia. 46 total yards. Smith has two carries for nine. Receiving Gross has two for 32 to lead the way. On the defensive side, Delaware's led by Kedrick Whitehead. The sophomore for Middletown, seven tackles for him. Buchanan with five. Cam Kitchen has four tackles, as does Justice Henley. Justice Henley had two big pass breakups early in the contest for Delaware State. Niebauer has five tackles. Smith with three. Parker with three. Cavacati with three. We'll keep an eye out on him for the second half. He did not play that last series for Delaware State, and we saw him get banged up a little earlier. We'll see if we'll need to take a Newark urgent care injury stoppage for him at any point in the second half. As we look at the team stats Delaware 31 plays 151 yards DSU 36 plays 172 yards Delaware 10 first downs DSU 7 the Hens have 42 yards rushing 109 through the air DSU 60 yards rushing 112 through the air penalties hurt DSU 7 for 62 yards just one penalty for Delaware for 5 yards the Hornets have had the football for 16-34 while Delaware 13 26 time of possession converting on third down Delaware at 50 percent four of eight 33 percent for DSU three of nine Hornets have scored on both of their red zone trips but they got field goals out of those visits Delaware one of one in the red zone what it stands out to you Bill as we look at those first half steps well the fact that Delaware's defense has been on the play for 36 plays 16 minutes and 34 seconds of a time of possession for Delaware State very smart by Ron Milstead and Eric Day to try to shorten the game up run the ball a little bit more keep Delaware's defense uh, offense off the field and try to get them out of sync what I was impressed with was the way Jared Ambrose started his play calling he initially went with some short quick throws out of key field a little bit more and also got Pat involved in the run game I thought it was a very well planned out first half we need to execute a little bit more on some of our other run games, but a couple of great blocks there by Kroll in particular on the run by Kehoe. So that offensive line is doing some very good things. We're almost running exclusively regular personnel, the same wide receivers, though Dejon Lee has gotten subbed a few times with uh, Robinson and Will Knight got in for three plays at the end, actually on the touchdown throw. So I thought personnel usage has been excellent. Our young defense has held up very well. I thought that stand down on the goal line in the red zone, the second time was a big one where they came away with only three points. All right, we're about a minute before Delaware will kick it away to start the second half. The Hens originally won the toss and chose to receive, so DSU will get it first as we start the second half. Before we do, we'll welcome back in Matt Jane. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Had my eyes on Cavacante as Delaware State came out of the locker room and everybody else lined up on the sideline in front of the visiting stands, and then they went over to the end zone in front of the student section but Cavacante stayed over on the sideline he was up but he was limping three or four teammates came over to him gave him a big hug pat on the backside it looks like he's going to try to go but he is far from 100 percent and I think that's a big difference you look at when Delaware's offense started to click Cavacante who was flying around in that first quarter making plays just not nearly as effective in the second and if he can't find a way to battle through and, and get back to 100 percent that's a huge loss for a Dell State defense that much improved from a year ago or at least the coaching staff thought they would be coming into this season but their biggest area of worry death they don't have a ton of it and he's their best player 
Thank you, Matt. That injury update brought to you by Newark Urgent Care, located at 324 East Main Street. Visit them at newarkuc.org. Delaware will kick off right to left. Jake Roth will boot it into what was formerly the student section. Student section flip sides this season. It's returnable from the goal line, but a touchback as it was in the end zone. So Kali uh, will call for the fair catch, and uh, now you can do that as of last season. So DSU's offense will come out after the fair catch by a DSU. So the Hens defense back on the field. I've been impressed by some of these youngsters. Justice Henley, a couple of pass breakups. Johnny Buchanan's been everywhere. Drew Nichols with several tackles. Whitehead already with seven tackles in the game. And Noah Plack laying the wood earlier in the contest, the biggest tackle of the night. I really liked our safety play. Now starting to get a feel for getting down to that backside of the zone, cut back, Plack and Whitehead there to make great plays. You need your safeties to make a lot of tackles in this scheme. Shane Smith back in as the quarterback. He started the contest, and he'll give to the running back to start the game with three-yard pickup. Sal Morrow in on the tackle. He was named captain earlier this week. Coach Rocco on the coaches show yesterday saying he sees all CAA potential out of his redshirt junior from Staten Island. Boy, I really like Sal Morrow. He works extremely hard. He's a big weight room guy. Chris Stewart's done a wonderful job with him. He's got a great get off and wonderful footwork. Check that. Bathia is the quarterback. The freshman tosses to Peeler, and the ball is caught nearly first down yardage. Morrow again with the push out. It's going to be two yards shy of the first down, maybe three, as they mark it at the 32 yard line. Going to be quickly third down. They'll make it third down and three for the DSU 32 as we're just getting started in quarter number three. Morrow sometimes will be a pass rusher or a run stopper, and then he's off in coverage as he was on that play to make the tackle. Give his to Brian Dallas trying to bounce it outside of the right. Nichols and Buchanan all over it with help from Noah Platt. Boy, Platt set the edge, turned it back in inside. That was what you call great team defense. Chris Kosh has got to be very excited about the way this young defense is playing. Three plays in the punt unit coming out onto the field. That's how you want to get them started in the second half for Delaware. And we'll have Jordan Townsend back to return once again. He had a 47-yard return. It sparks Delaware's touchdown drive. And now he'll stand around it's the exact spot where he dropped his first try of his career at the 30-yard line. A very talented true freshman, the only true freshman anywhere on the two deep. Last year, Vinny Papali, of course, was the punt returner. I'm not sure I'd be kicking the ball to him, and they angle it away from him into the boundary. They bounce it at the 29-yard line, takes a DSU roll to the 24, hops backwards, and it's kicked at the 25. So Delaware, after a defensive stop to start the third quarter, a 43-yard putt, and Delaware will come out on offense when we return. We'll take our first time out here on 94.7 WDSD and iHeartRadio with a heads up 16 to 6. This first drive, so that's a big loss as Matt and we were talking about earlier for the Delaware State defense. Keo is the quarterback. Lee the running back. I'm sure Coach Rock would love to see that running game get going here in quarter number three. Deller up 16 to 6. Keel awaits the snap going to talk to Mario Farronella, the third team all CAA center for the Blue Hens in his sixth season, the graduate. And now he snaps it to Keo. Room up the middle for Lee. He's got space at the 30, sprinting at the 40, sideline midfield, and he is knocked out of bounds after a big pickup in DSU territory. A 35-yard gain for Lee. Zone cutback. The play starts to the right, weaves back. Kroll does a great job, and Thyrick Picks did a wonderful job of staying on his block and the stalk on the cornerback. Biggest pickup on the ground of the night for Delaware. Dejon Lee getting into Delaware State Territory at the 41. Keo passes caught by Tyler, his second. The first was worth six. That we're going to go to the 38-yard line, a pickup of only two, wrapped up and brought out of bounds by Isaiah Small. Delaware with tempo here. They're going fast. I love the way Tyler presents himself to Keo, showing his pads at all times, makes him an easier target. They'll mark it at the 37 of DSU. Second down and six. Keo, man wide open across the field is Umachi. Sheds one, dancing at the 30. Help comes, spinning. Umachi stays on his feet, gets to the 25-yard line. First down yardage after a 12-yard pickup and the tackle made by Tavares Sample. 
They show zone to the left. Kehoe pulls the ball and then throws the ball out to the wide side to the right. Amici with some really nice moves after the catch. Delaware State's defense really starting to run towards the play. That leaves Amici wide open in that far right flat. First down and 10. 12 minutes left in the third quarter. And Lee gets another one. This time tackled from behind. Good pursuit that time. It was Brooks Parker, the sophomore from Delaware. Laurel Delaware, Del Mar graduate. He won the 2017 Division II state title here on this field. And now gets a stop against Dejan Lee. It's going to be second out of nine. Parker inserts himself. A great player for Dave Hearn down at Del Mar. He was also a fullback in high school. A great runner. An excellent linebacker with really good instincts. Ball the 24-yard line for Delaware. In motion goes Coleman. He'll join two receivers on the left side. Keo rolling that way. Looking upfield. Has Umanchi. And it's caught at the 16-yard line. Tackle made by Isaiah Small. Going to be about a yard shy of that first down marker. It'll be third down and short. A yard to go for Delaware. Amici does a nice job in getting out of his cuts with his arms. He's got excellent footwork. Presents himself to Kehoe. It was a little bit of a sliding pocket to the left. Amici doing a nice job of keeping himself in Pat Keo's vision. We've got two Keos on the field as MJ Keo, where number 44, we figured out who 44 was, comes onto the field on the left side of that line. In motion goes Coleman on third down and a yard. Keo rolls out, tosses, and it's incomplete. I don't know if one of the DSU linemen got a hand on it. I think possibly Christian Johnson might have batted that, tipped it enough, and made it wobbly for Coleman to catch. And now it's fourth down and one. It's a little bit of a bootleg action to the left. They slide Coleman through the formation to the right. It was well defended by Delaware State. Pat really had to throw that ball low to have Coleman have any chance to catch it. So Jake Roth going to come on for his second try of the game. at a 38-yarder. It's going to be from 34. Near side hand. Hold is down. Kick is up. Jake Roth certainly has enough leg on it. And he splits the uprights for the second time today. Delaware goes up 19-6. Jake Roth's second field goal extends Delaware's lead. 10.36 on the third quarter clock. We'll take a timeout here on your Blue Hen Sports Radio Network. This one is. No, he's going to bring it. Hornets bring it out of the end zone on a Jake Roth kickoff after a Jake Roth's 33-yard field goal. And uh, not a wise decision from a yardage standpoint. And from the point of you got six blue jerseys on you as you bring it out to the 16-yard line, it looks like. That's Kali, who's been the return man all day for a DSU. A seven-play, 59-yard drive. Jake Roth got it through the uprights. And uh, a new battery with Nick Pritchard, who usually holds, we mentioned, not available tonight. You're absolutely right. So Mason Jones, a redshirt sophomore, backup quarterback as the holder. And Jake Reed from Caravel Academy. Father's the head coach of Caravel doing the short snapping. Been very impressed with the operation here tonight. That really shows the good work that Coach Legg has done with the special teams and Jake Roth being able to make those adjustments. Three plays of offense for DSU to start the second half. It was three and out. Now they'll come back onto the field. And same old, same old as the third quarter continues. Delaware not allowing yardage for this Hornets offense, this time on the ground. And the tackle was made by Liam Trainer, the redshirt freshman. Played one game last year versus Stony Brook. Makes a tackle here in the third quarter of action. It's going to be second down 
And a Liam Trainer, one of the most improved linebackers, though he's not starting, has really done a nice job filling in at times and a great spring practice for him. Bethia gonna throw towards his sideline. Pass is caught running up the field for first down yardage to the 33 yard line was Quanta Kali and Justice Henley gets another stop, but not before first down yardage was picked up by the Hornets. Delaware rolling some coverage to field here. But they are working back into the boundary where you get a softened corner. Delaware will make an adjustment, but I love the way their safeties and their linebackers are getting involved in the run game now in that zone cutback. But they have three of five throwing the football in this contest. The rookie from New York, record holder for passing yardage in his high school career. Now he's going to scramble a bit, get out of bounds before Sal Morrow can get to him at the 35-yard line. A pickup of two, second out and eight once again. A savvy play there by Sal Morrow, who is dropping more often this year into that left flat. What he had to do was wait for the quarterback to cross the line of scrimmage because he had a receiver in his area. He's got to defend that and then come up. A lot of players will be too aggressive, come up, and allow the quarterback to throw the ball over the top. Heady play by Morrow. See a new running back for the first time. That's Thomas Bertrand Hudson, and he runs to the left side. Another big guy for this DSU team. Doesn't get far as he crosses the 35 up to the 36-yard line. I know a black in on another stop, but we've seen now Brian Dallas. Richard Harris is 215 pounds, another bulldozer, it looks like. And Thomas Bertrand Hudson, a redshirt freshman. Doors defense doing a nice job of running in a sub package from time to time. Keeps fresh players on the field so they don't tire out since Delaware State's run a few more plays here in the game. Nice substitutions by Chris Kosh and the staff. They're down in seven for DSU. Ball throw, 36 yard line, down 19 to six. Pressure coming. Bethia forced to get rid of it, bobbled and dropped by Trey Gross. It was Liam Trainer who put the pressure on the quarterback. Front side blitz, Trainer gets through cleanly, does a great job though of not delivering a cheap shot on the quarterback. Kept it up top, but not at the head. A really nice play there and a good call by Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator, to get some pressure on Bathia, not allow him to get comfortable. Almost a sack there, hence they get any sacks in the first half, but when they do, Food Lion Feeds just donated, will donate another 1,000 meals to feed our neighbors in need right here in Newark. A total of 30,000 meals will be donated in the communities that participate in colleges this season. So let's cheer on the sacks to give back. Jordan Towson back to return. His feet at his own 25-yard line. It's high. Spitting into the hands of Towson as he backs pedals at the 19. Gets around a few swarming Hornets players up to the 23. A four-yard return for Towson after a 45-yard punt off the leg of Romo Martinez. Outside of the missed field goal early on in the game after the fumbled punt by Towson, I think... The Delaware State's kicking game has been fairly solid here. The two brothers, the Martinez brothers, do a nice job collaborating as holder and kicker and also punter. Good hang time. Didn't allow Towson to really get ahead of steam up. He did the best he could to get four yards. A smart play, diving forward to get that. And sticking with Dejan Lee. We've seen all three running backs. Knight no carries, but he was the back on that three-play drive that went for a score for the hands. First and ten. They'll start at their own 20 three-yard line and they'll go backwards to begin as a tackle for loss comes from Brooks Parker again we call his name the sophomore from Laurel Delaware loss of three back to the 20. Parker coming in from that left side of Delaware State's line just diagnosing the zone read it's a cutback play they pull the right guard Gilmore to try to get the edge good penetration there by the Delmar player who I think has a chance to be a really good MEAC linebacker. Lee has 41 yards on the day at 34 on that one burst on the last drive. 19 to 6, Delaware leads. Keo tosses one, has Pitt sideline right, caught at the 40, out of bounds at the 42, and Ty Pitts, a 22 yard picker. It starts with great protection. Both Owen Tyler and Dejon Lee did a nice job there of securing the left side of the Delaware offense to allow Kehoe to step up into that crossing pattern by Pitts, who's really impressed me here this evening with his route running and catch and run after the catch. Andre Robinson is the back and the give on first down after the big pickup by Pitts and he picks up about five on first down. Christian Johnson in there, Moad Abdus Salam also with the tackle and going back to Pitts. If you remember, this is the guy that committed to Danny Rocco at Richmond prior to signing with Rocco at Delaware. 
back in 2017, a redshirt sophomore from Manassas, Virginia, and they like his talent. We're seeing some of it on display. Four catches, 56 yards for Pitt. Second out and five. Delaware leads by 13, 19 to six. As we go under seven minutes, 643 in the third quarter. Low snap. Keo controls it. Pressure coming. It's picked up. He throws a dart out of the hands of Owen Tyler. He hit him in Delaware State territory at around the 38, but Tyler could not hold on. Pat Kehoe continues to impress me with his ability when he feels pressure to climb the pocket, meaning work his feet towards the line of scrimmage without getting too close, but keeping his eyes trained down the field on his receivers. Even though that one was incomplete, a lot of quarterbacks look down at the rush or look how to get away. He's doing a great job of being able to keep his vision exactly where it should be. Great eye discipline. Third down and five for Keo. Shotgun snap quickly throws Pitts' sixth catch of the day. His first down yardage in the DSU territory at the 42. Excuse me, fifth catch of the day. That's symbolic of Jared Ambrose's offense. He gets it in Keo's hands and gets it out very quickly. Pitts running a little stop route into the boundary over there. A perfect throw right on the body. Pitts actually almost broke free on that. He's got great leg drive after the catch, does Pitts. 6-14, third quarter of football. I form as Keo goes under center now. Tyler is the fullback. Robinson, the transfer from Penn State, is the running back. Play action. Keo all alone. Tosses downfield to Pitts. Some contact. Pitts can't hold on. And no penalty flags. Just solid coverage by the Hornets in the end zone. As we talked earlier, they throw short to set up long. Pitts running a deep post pattern. He was double covered, but Keo again throws it in exactly the right place. A good time to take a shot. You've got momentum. You're working the ball well. Take a shot down the field. I really like the play call there by Ambrose. Now it leads 19 to 6, 5.58, third quarter. And Keo stands in shotgun four. Two tight ends go in motion. Tyler Ambrose. Give this to Robinson up the gut, and he's brought down by Christian Johnson, who's played well for DSU. He was wrapped up as he got down to the 41-yard line. It'll be third down coming up for the head. When you watch the tape on Robinson, you'll see how quickly he can make the jump cut. That means he goes to a spot, jumps with his body and his feet out to one side or another. That time it was left to right, and then gets his shoulder pads low and square again. That allows him to take on defenders and be more violent as he finishes the run. See Daylon Derry, Daylon Derry going in motion. Keo on third down and nine. Checking, checking, flag on the play. Here comes pressure. Keo eludes it. He's going to run at the 40. 35 30 first down yardage for Pat Keo. The elusiveness and the run picking up the first. We'll see what the flag is. Officials talking things over. Keo was in trouble to start. Keo looking like quite the scrambler tonight at, at 21 yards. 240, 6'4, yeah. 240. He's got great feet. It's a hold against Delaware State. We didn't have the mic that time by the official, but he indicated that it's a hold against the Hornets. So either way, Keo ran for the first down, and he will get first down yardage to the 30. The drive extends thanks to the feet of Pat Keo and the penalty against the guys in white. Pat's a little bit faster than I think people give him credit for. So. That's I think a you're big right. body moving well. He also knows how to finish a run. It's a healthier version of Pat Keo showing some speed there. They're going to mark off the yardage now. As there was a little bit of delay, I think the officials uh, perhaps confused about where to mark the football as it was back at the 30. And now with penalty yardage, they'll move it up. Five minutes left in the third quarter. Delaware within striking distance again in the red zone once again for the second time today at the 20-yard line. Keo in shotgun form. Two wide receivers left side, Coleman and Pitts. He'll turn. Give to Robinson, shuffles his feet and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more. He tries to reverse, tries to get out of the pile, but was unable to do that. His motion was stopped at the 20 before he went backwards. Jihad Niebauer with the tackle. That was the first time all night Delvers used an unbalanced set. That was in over. They were strong to the wide side of the field. They were on the inside zone. Robinson that time was held up. Sometimes, even as a great tough runner, you're better off going down when you're in the throws of three or four tacklers. 420 left in the third. 
And it's second down and 10 from the 20 yard line in the red zone are the Blue Heads up 19 to 6. Keo tossing, passes caught, Coleman at the 15 yard line, gain of five. It'll be third and five for Delaware. We haven't talked a lot about Gene tonight. He's a nice route runner, comes out of his breaks with really the right speed and arm action. I like his ability to make plays down the field. It's good to see him get involved a little bit more in the pass game. First catch for Coleman. Dwayne Granger's in a nice job in coverage on Gene Coleman who comes into the game on the scouting report as the number one wide receiver with good reason. Leading returning receiver from last year is Coleman, the junior from Montclair, New Jersey. Third down and four. 337 and ticking. Third quarter of football. Delaware up 19-6, to six. Keogh lobs, end zone pits, reaching for it, comes back, grabs it, touchdown, Ty Pitts! A great back shoulder throw by Pat Keogh to Pitts, who is split out to the left, runs a fade pattern, did a great job of combating, coming back for the ball, and now fighting the defensive back. The play was made by the right guard, Gilmore, picking up a safety blitz. What a debut this season for the redshirt sophomore from Forest Park High School. Six catches now for Thyric Pitts. 81 yards and his first career touchdown. Delaware up 25-6 to six on an 11-play, 77-yard drive. Roth has missed one PAT, and you can make it two as that one was blocked. Penetration up in both A-gaps there by Delaware State. A good job there to put pressure on Keogh. We'll and take a timeout with 3.27 remaining in the third quarter and Delaware on the board once again. 25-6 to six after the Pitts catch from Pat Keogh. Back in a moment on the Bluehead Sports Radio Network. Want to play? Eleven plays, 77 yards go the Blue Hands. Pat Keogh ends the drive with a 14-yard pass to Thyric Pitt. Six catches, 81 yards for the sophomore. His first score, Pat Keogh now 18 of 28 for 186 yards and two touchdowns plus a touchdown run for Keogh. Delaware in control of this one after going down 6-3. to three. They have reeled off 22 unanswered. And Pat Keogh is having quite the debut to his season, distributing the ball to six different wide receivers, putting together long drives. That one took 446 off the clock. And now Jake Roth, who has uh, missed one extra point and just recently had one blocked, will kick this one away. Quana Kali is back to return. He'll go that way. He waved for the fair catch as the ball left the foot of Jake Roth. That's pretty comical. I guess that's a great scouting report by the special teams coach of Dell State. Let's set it down to the field and Matt Janus. Hey guys, a couple of quick things. Uh, Minor injury stuff. Camp Kitchen and Frank Burton both looked at by the athletic training staff. Seem to be all right. Kitchen's going to go back into the game. Lower body. Looked like maybe some cramp stuff. They were getting them liquids. And then how about on that touchdown pass? The job of Pat Keogh, experience, repetition as a starter. He really did a nice job making Dell State commit pre-snap. He changed the count just a little bit, knew exactly how much time he had on the play clock, saw the safety blitz, knew where he had single coverage, took the shot to the end zone, and got rewarded with six. Thank you, Matt. That update on a couple of Delaware linemen brought to you by Newark Urgent Care. You never know what the day will bring. That's why when an unexpected injury or illness occurs, we are fortunate to have Newark Urgent Care. Alec Bathia will toss downfield, looking for Trey Gross, and Gross reaches up to get it over Justice Henley in Delaware territory down at the 39-yard line. What a toss by Tylik Bathia for 36 yards. There is a flag afterwards. Biggest pass of the night for the true freshman Bathia. Take a listen. Oh, Mike off, buddy. <laughs> I thought that's what it might be. You can't hear the official, and no one in the stadium can, in fact. But uh, it was taunting on uh, Trey Gross, a junior from Annapolis. She kind of flexed some muscles after making the catch, and uh, the referees thought that was a little bit much. So they'll go backwards after getting uh, up into Delaware territory. They'll back it up back to the Hornets territory at the 46. So here you are trailing by 19 on the road. You make a big gain here to maybe get your offense going. And you get carried away with yourself just making a good play. An excellent throw by Bethia. That's got to be better disciplined by Delaware State. I know Ron Milstead not happy with that penalty. Bethia with the give to Bryant Dallas going nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage he goes. 
We see Joe Zubalaga pop up out of the pile. Great story. Kevin Tresselini did a wonderful story on him. I don't know if it was in the spring or earlier than that, but the fact that uh, he walked on and now working his way into the starting lineup, uh, just phenomenal. The redshirt freshman from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, was the Chesmont Conference Player of the Year in high school. Two. It comes from a great program, Scott, yeah. that Unionville public school is a terrific school and has had a wonderful football program for the last 25 years trainer also playing very well in friend for Demali. If they have some time pumps finds dallas bryant he makes a man miss at the 45 yard line can't make a second man miss as jordan juicy morris comes in and gets his first stop of the night that's that depth that we talked about earlier on about delaware state's defense uh, delaware's defensive line tommy walsh now Juicy Morris doing a great job of that pursuit angle and coming across. I meant to say the trainer is in for Drew Nichols. When when you've got a guy named Juicy, you just can't wait for four years of sacks from the big fella from Burlington, New Jersey. Third down and nine for DSU. Bathia pumps, down he goes. Chase McGowan with the tackle, and it's a sack for Delaware, their first of the night. McGowan coming off the right edge with just a rip and a speed run over the top. He just blew up the left tackle who couldn't set quick enough. That was as well done a pass rush as you can see in a big time sack just when Delaware needed a lift. And the Hens had a sack, a sack to give back. Food Line Feeds just donated another 1,000 meals to feed our neighbors in need. Right here in Newark, a total of 30,000 meals will be donated in communities of participating colleges this season. So let's cheer on sacks to give back. First one of the season for Delaware. Put pressure on out of the punt unit out. And Jordan Townsend again back to receive this time at the 14-yard line, running wide into traffic at the... 17-yard line, a 46-yard punt by Romo Martinez, and let's send it down to the field and match in. Great job by the Delaware defensive front to get the sack, but got to give some credit as well to the defensive captain, Nigel Hill. They were trying to get a quick hitter on the outside to Trey Gross, and Nigel Hill jumped it. And actually credit to the freshman quarterback for Delaware State, because if he threw it, Hill walks his way into the end zone. But that's understanding what a defense wants, or an offense wants to accomplish down in distance and good football instincts. And Nigel Hill, with that coverage, set up the sack. Nigel Hill stepping up as the captain. And we're going to see Noel Henderson for the first time. The redshirt sophomore from Smyrna. He wowed the crowd last time we saw him on this field with a big game against Villanova to end the season coming in for Pat Keogh's injury. We see former Gatorade Player of the Year going to keep it on his first snap, running to the left side. Design run for Nolan Henderson, showing some speed as he got to the outside. But just back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard as Jihad Niebauer shoved him out of bounds. We thought we might see, I said it at three and a half for quarterbacks, and now we see their fourth quarterback good, of the game. Good call, and I hope you took the over. <laughs> Henderson really impressed me in the spring and the, in the preseason practice. He's really improved his body. He gets the ball out quickly, and he's a terrific runner. Has a great sense of the game and a great feel. Trips to the right side on second out and nine from the Delaware 18-yard line. A flag on the play. And shoving after the play, Nolan Henderson went down, and just no room for that in this game. As there was a penalty, play was stopped, and it looked like 78. Leaky Sue, I believe, was the gentleman who knocked down Nolan Henderson, just shoved him after play was well over. So that's going to be a big penalty against DSU. That's frustration setting in down 25 to 6 with 23 seconds left in the third. That's the second penalty here in the last couple minutes that's negated a good play. That was going to be a penalty against Delaware. Then you get this, the I guess it's going to be called unnecessary roughness, and you also had the Tawny penalty after the big pass, which then results in Delaware State having to punt. So... Uh, Ron Milstead's team is going to have a lot to talk about. They've played hard and they've done some good things, but the penalties have really hurt. Delaware continues to be impressive de defensively and offensively in their discipline and composure. The ref lost his mic, but the first penalty was against De Delaware, and then the personal foul goes, obviously, against DSU. And, Scott, that can happen a lot when you have a new quarterback in. You're not quite used to the cadence. You've gotten into Pat Keogh's rhythm, and now Henderson's in. Not necessarily his fault. You've just got to adjust. 
That's a 120 pound difference from Nolan Henderson, who thought the play was over, and Leaky Sue, who's at 295 pounds. Ball's going to go to the 28 yard line. Cavacante Scott and Matt is back out on the field. They need his defensive prowess. De Lorenzo picking up 10 after the two penalties. So Henderson back in the gun. Running back is Andre Robinson. Luke Frederick in the game. Goes in motion. Henderson going to keep on the read up to the 36-yard line. And the tackle made that time. By Isaiah Guthrie. That'll take us into the fourth quarter. And all the Henderson in the game. He has the range for the final 15. We presume 25 to 6. Delaware on top as we head to the final 15 on 94 7 WDSD. Quarter of action. I'm Scott Klansker alongside Bill Harmon. Nick Allison my producer to the right. Matt Janus down on the field. Earl Holland doing a great job it's back in the studio. Seconds, keeping though. us on the air. Benny Panella, our studio host. That's the crew tonight. 25 to 6. Delaware on top. Into the game. Nolan Henderson. Last time we saw him, he went 12 of 20. 152 yards passing against the Villanova Wildcats. He showed me an awful lot last year. He had to step in after Kehoe went out with that concussion. He battles he's got great feet in the pocket a very quick release his father was his baseball coach at Smyrna High he won an awful lot of football games down there for Mike Judy and I just like his competitiveness he has a wonderful feel for the game a very high sports IQ football IQ he's going to be a really good one for Delaware a couple new players in the game for Delaware on offense as we Find Austin Haverstrom lined up. Dylan Zimmerman also in the game. And the transfer from Penn State. Linebacker for the Nittany Lions. But a wide receiver in high school, Dalen Darien, in the contest as well. Trips to the right side on second down and two to start the fourth quarter of action from the Delaware 36-yard line. Henderson is the quarterback. Dropping back. Tosses one. Far side of the field. Pass is snagged by Austin Haverstrom. His first career catch for first down yardage up to the 40. Carter Lynch, a junior, is in at right tackle. And Chuka moves into right guard. He played a lot of guard last year. Gives us great versatility. It's nice to see this depth being developed by Billy Poland on the offensive line. This looks familiar to Smyrna High School fans. Uh, Nolan Henderson is the quarterback. And Will Knight is the running back. Knight gets his first carry as a blue hand. The transfer from Old Dominion. Redshirted last year. Played in four games for the Monarchs. Gets up to the... 43-yard line, a gain of three for Will Knight, and his first career carry as a college player. He is the all-time rushing leader in Delaware High School history. Pretty impressive resume for what is uh, number three on the depth chart tonight, Will Knight. I saw him quite a bit in high school. Almost never got caught when he had Saw him run by a bunch, he, he? Yeah, he ran by me an awful <laughs> lot. But a uh, very impressive, very versatile runner. Can do a lot of different things for you. Pass is caught by Darian. A quick out to midfield and that's good for another first down. Owen Henderson has this offense moving. If we close the book on Pat Keogh, 18 of 28 186 yards passing, two touchdowns and a rushing touchdown on top of that. Delaware up 25 to 6 Good night for the senior captain. Yeah, Keogh really showed me a lot a lot of poise, a lot of great leadership that's what he's known for. That running ability was very impressive tonight as well as his accuracy down the field. Trips to the left side and they throw to Austin Haverstrom. He tried to make a man miss but couldn't do it Solid open field tackle by but Jihad Niebauer, a third team all MEAC selection a year ago. Haverson lost his shoe on that play as he tried to step out of the tackle. They're high on Haverson. I like that play. Yes, I really liked him in spring ball. I liked him in the summer. He really shows a lot of good route running. He's got excellent hands, really tracks the ball well. Second down and 12. Loss of two on the play. Haverson, two catchers on this drive. Nolan Henderson, shotgun snap. Pressure comes. Scrambling is Henderson. Pumps. He gets away from all of it. Now he's sprinting towards the sideline. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, I should say, which was midfield and maybe into DSU territory. They'll mark it at the 49. When you play with Nolan Henderson, you've got to work on a scramble drill. That's when the quarterback gets pressure, avoids it, steps out on the perimeter. What you've got to do is if you're short, you need to move long. If you're long, you need to come back. And if you're to the side, you need to get into his vision. Delaware, well, I'm sure works on that quite a bit, especially with Henderson, who's so elusive out on the edge. 
12 minutes, 35 seconds left in the ball game. Trips to the left side. Third down to nine. DSU 49-yard line. Henderson pumping again, scrambling again, stepping up in the pocket. Now he's going to run. 45 brought down there, and he's going to be four yards shy of the first down of marker as Nigel Bynum, the senior from Mount Pleasant High School. That's Delaware High School tackling Delaware High School, and it's going to be fourth down. Well, we'll see Jake Roth work on his rugby kick here. He's got such a strong leg, he'll kick this end over end, almost like a golf shot sandwich, trying to drop it in somewhere inside the 10-yard line. DSU time gonna out. call timeout. Time hey, we got the bike back here on the referee. They were working on it hard during that last timeout. And a timeout taken by a DSU. They'll have two more. Fourth down and four coming up for Delaware. 12.03 on the fourth quarter clock with the hands up 25 to six. Have you been one of the many dash ins lately? There are three new locations in Delaware with a new location in Newark coming soon. Check out their craveable eats menu with made to order sandwiches, subs, and quesadillas. Quality food made with premium ingredients. Stop in a dash in today, dash in, lifting life's journeys. So the Hens in control of this one, went down six to three, scored 13 points in that second quarter, nine in the third, and now Nolan Henderson leading the way. As we look at the stats, 229 total yards for Delaware State, most of that coming in the first half as they were up around 170, I believe. Delaware, 301 total yards of offense. And look at those penalties. That's not what you want to see if you're Rod Milstead for DSU. Ten penalties, 102 yards worth of penalties for the Hornets. Can't do that when you're the underdogs on a road game and a rivalry game. And the converse of that is Delaware with this young team on defense. Only two penalties for ten yards. So good discipline by Danny Rocco's team. Rod Milstead will have a lot to talk about. They put forth a great effort. They've shown some good things. Their defense runs to the ball well. They've had some good open field tackling. Their quarterback play at times has been pretty good, and Dallas was an excellent runner. I thought uh, he showed a lot. And Cavaconti, as we know, we talked a lot about him and his skills, not only rushing the passer from his linebacker position, but working side to side. I think that injuries slowed him up a little bit, but uh, he's going to be a very fine player. And Brooks Parker from Del Mar, I thought he really flashed here this evening. We have Jake Roth on to punt. He's done a fine job. Nick Pritchard again, not available. One of the top punters in all of FCS football, perhaps all the country at any level. He'll be back this season, not available tonight, is the word from the sports information office. So Roth will punt this one away, and he's going to send that one into the end zone, just like he does when he kicks the ball off. Uh, so DSU will get the touchback before their offense comes on the field. We'll send it down to the sideline and match in. You, know, you guys have been touching on it throughout the night. All of the Delaware players on this Delaware State roster, really both teams, and it's appropriate in what used to be called the Route 1 rivalry in the, the two Division One programs in the state of Delaware. But Dell State has made an especially uh, acute concentration on trying to keep kids inside the state and keep some of the better talent 16 of the 19 Delaware products have been signed by this coaching staff remember they only took the job in spring of 28 so that's a lot of players in a short amount of time the Milstead said when he looked back at the most successful teams in program history they had the best players from Delaware so that's where he wants to put his concentration in recruiting a lot of talent in the first state the Thea Tawson sideline and a one-handed grab was made by Trey Gross. Did he stay in? No, he didn't. Still an amazing grab by Trey Gross. One-handed around midfield, but just wasn't able to haul it in bounds. Uh, we've seen it in bits and pieces here. Bethia is, is going to be a pretty good ball player. Uh, the toss, the touch on that one, uh, you could see as he went downfield and placed it where only Trey Gross could get it, although it fell incomplete. He's going to be a good quarterback as he took the reins after, I think, the third possession in this contest from Shane Smith. And it's been all freshman QB since then. Ball at the 20-yard line with Thea. Screen pass and another big hit by Noah Plack. The freshman red shirt from South Fayette High School has been put on a show on the defensive side in his debut this season. Boy, does he bring a lot of power and concentration to the point of attack. He read that tear screen, which is a wide receiver screen with a couple blockers out in front. He just gets a great fit from the safety position. Your angles and your leverage are so important. I think he's got a great feel for it, especially considering this is his first start. Delaware up 25-6. to six. 
DSU third down and five for their own 25, 11-11. Left in the fourth with Thea scrambling, pressure coming, throwing on the run, passes bobbled and incomplete. It goes solid coverage that time by the Delaware defense, and it's fourth down. That was Raya burdened with that coverage you were speaking about. Another Delaware resident from William Penn spent a couple years at uh, Virginia. And this is a nice pickup through the transfer portal for Danny Rocco. I really like Burton. He did not play at Virginia, transferring over. Brother of Frank Burton. Both graduates of William Penn. And solid coverage there for Ryan Burton. Pressure was coming from Chase McGowan. He almost got his second sack of the day. Townsend back to return on the punt. Pressure coming. And it's blocked. Picked up. And into the end zone goes Brian Dennis. Teller up 31 to 6. A great job by Dennis, not only to run through the block point, but also then to be able to scoop and score. A lot of players leave their feet. The better technique is to run through the point of the kicker's going to kick it. He did a great job of taking it right off the toe. A wonderful play. But also some really nice pressure in there by Brandon Bros, a backup tight end, who put the initial pressure on, forced the punter to slide to his left, and it allowed for the block. So nice teamwork there on the special teams. Coach Legg is doing a great job with his special teams group here tonight, making some big plays. No teamwork on the block and recover, though, because Brian Dennis blocked it. He Picked it up, and he ran into the end zone. And now Delaware having some trouble getting their special teams extra point unit onto the field. That's not going to make the coaching staff happy. They'll use a, a, a timeout. Uh, Matt, you're standing around uh, down there. Uh, what, what was your uh, sight line? Oh, my goodness. You know, football is a fun game, and you want to enjoy it, especially big moments like that. But if you are Frank Burton, you're going to hope that the – game film was not tightly put towards the <laughs> celebration that time because Burton was having so much fun with Dennis was lifting him up on his shoulders carrying him over to the bench giving him the accolades for the special teams play he forgot he was on the special teams protection team he was the guy that didn't go back out there that time and Danny Rocco couldn't believe it and he just stared at Burton as he took the field. That that might be a little awkward. And that's the type of thing you want as a coach. A lot has gone right since the end of the first quarter. You want some teaching moments that you can point to and keep guys sharp before your first road game next week. But funny moment, but maybe not so much for Burton come tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see if he's smiling when he wants it on tape. You can't say that those in the first state don't have love for one another here as we have two in-state teams playing one another. A Concord High School graduate and Brian Dennis getting a big play with the block scoop and score to put the heads up 31 to 6 and then another Delaware high school graduate lifting him up in the air. We've got 10.56 left to play. Delaware is up 31 to 6 as they've reeled off 28 unanswered. Roth has had an extra point missed, an extra point blocked, and now he's out again as uh, we've got a new holder in this game. Nick Pritchard, usually the holder as well. Mason Jones will hold the football for Roth. Is this one blocked as well? And Jones recovers the football. That time it was Jordan Niebauer who got his hand on it. So again, Delaware cannot secure the extra point, and the score remains 31 to 6. Delaware on top with 10.56 left to play. We'll take a timeout here on the Blue Hens Sports Radio Network. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Trax for around $149 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. The kickoff from Jake Roth as uh, DSU will get the football to start 
at the 25-yard line. 10.56 left to go, 31-6. to six. And uh, with a lead, uh, it's grown and grown and grown after going down 6-3 to three early on. The hands uh, putting this one away, and they're able to get some substitutions in the game, which is always good in week number one. Well, nothing's better than being able to get your seconds in, especially in some good moments here in a game that is very meaningful. The ones got a chance to play. They perform very well. You keep them healthy. You get twos on film. You can work on a lot of corrections. I think the Delaware staff on both sides of the ball has done a nice job with their sub packages. First and ten for DSU at their own 25-yard line. We see Richard Harris with the give. Saw him a bit in the second quarter, first time in the second half that we see him. He gets up to the 27-yard line, gain of two. Tackled by Andres Castillo. Combining with Artis Hemingway. Hemingway was one of the most improved players in uh, the spring. Announced at halftime of that spring game. They like Hemingway, the sophomore from Pope John High School in Hillside, New Jersey. Big body man, gets great hand placement, works down the line of scrimmage. Very powerful lower body. Now we're the 31 to 6 lead, and Harris has some space into the secondary, and he is bulldozing his way into Delaware territory. He bounced off two would be tacklers for a 28 yard gain, and down he went at the 46 yard line of the Blue Hands. Good sign for Rod Milstead is that he's going to be able to run the ball, especially late in the year when you've got to be able to do it. Harris and Dallas both very physical runners finishes runs well good foot action some big guys now we see a new running back into the game for the first time that's Mike Waters and I was wondering if, if Waters was going to be seen in this game Waters was third on the team with 338 yards rushing last season but he was uh, their top guy in 2016 he was an all MEAC third teamer as a freshman with 820 yards his first year uh, but third maybe fourth Actually on the depth chart now for DSU. But Thea tossing, passes caught at the Delaware 27-yard line. Another first down, Quanta Colley with the pickup of 14. His fourth catch, he leads DSU in that category. Delaware State's had some moderate success with the RPO, the run-pass option where they fake the zone inside. The quarterback steps back. He can get some off coverage, some softer coverage out on the perimeter. And Bethea's thrown some really nice balls. It was going to be to Waters running wide. He cuts it back and is stopped at the 24-yard line. A pile of blue jerseys coming up after making the stop. Looked like Frank Burton, the last man to get up. Delaware coming back in with Kitchen, Burton, and Walsh here. To see if they can't uh, halt this run game by Delaware State. Second down and six coming up. Ball at the Delaware 24-yard line, 847 in the fourth quarter. And Delaware 31-6 to six lead. Give again to Harris, this time up the middle. And he gets close to the red zone, down at the 21-yard line. It'll be third down coming up for the Hornets. Anthony Toro, last man to get up that time. Also, Frank Burton. Frank Burton, though, waving to come off the field. A little bit of a limp for Burton, the redshirt junior from Bear. And here comes Cavado in, who I was really impressed with early on. Did a great job with his fits, his hand placement. And his power into the gap. He sent a lot of plays out to the outside to unblocked linebackers. But the other quarterback in shotgun four. Richard Harris to his left, the senior. Now he goes in motion to the right side of the freshman quarterback. The pressure coming. He tossed it high for Isaiah Williams. And the pressure on the mind of Tyler Bethia. We've called now Chase McGowan's name. This is the third time he has one sack. And now two QB hurries to his name. Now it's very quick off the ball. He almost looks like a sprinter coming out of his stance. Runs the bend very well and uses his hands to get the offensive lineman off balance. Fourth down and four. DSU going to talk about it. They'll call a timeout. We'll take a timeout with him. 7.58 remaining in this contest. And hands up 31-6. to six. So focus on the guys like Johnny Buchanan and Drew Nichols and the like that are actually playing in the game. We didn't mention the fact that Colby Reeder is missing from the lineup this season, out for the year, and, and that is a big loss. Guys getting a chance to step up. Well, Colby Reeder is an explosive player, had a tremendous high school career, did a great job here in his younger 
years. He had to have some back surgery at the beginning of the summer. He's back moving around. He looks like he's very fit. He'll be unable to play this year. I think it was a very smart decision to get that back straightened out. Delaware really misses him. Buchanan and others are picking up for him, but Colby Reed are going to be one of the most dynamic linebackers in the entire CA. On first down, the give is to Will Knight, and back in action is Brian Cavacanti, but he is limping after making the stop. He is not healthy. And, and, and I don't know why concern. you would play him at this point, especially with bigger games coming down the road. This game looks like it's going to be sealed up by Delaware. That's a good point. He is visibly limping and still was able to make the play. It tells you how good of a ball player he is. Second down and 14. Will Knight lost four on that first carry of the drive. Second down and 14, and pressure coming. Henderson running wide, trying to make something out of it. Gets out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Ball to 21, a gain of three. He is so speedy, is Nolan Henderson. But problem on this drive is uh, pressure's been coming. First on the run for a loss, so now on a scramble drill for Nolan Henderson. New center and Mickey Henry, who played at St. Elizabeth's, a really fine player in the Catholic League. Uh, nice backup center to Mario Farinelli. Another one of those Delaware high school players that Danny Rocco's recruited. 6.54 and ticking, and now the stoppage is Delaware, Delaware State. It's the third and final time out of the half. Delaware State taking the timeout. 6.54 remaining in the contest. Hens in control, 31-6. to six. Some uh, reserve players in the game for uh, Delaware. And Nolan Henderson took the reins in the fourth quarter. I want to remind our listeners that it is football season, so it's time to clear your schedule and get to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch the games. Buffalo Wild Wings, don't spend football season on that couch. We're waiting for you. We have wings. 6.54 left in the contest and uh, a good win for the Blue Hens as they'll go 1-0 and to start the year. 6.54 left. I think it's pretty safe at this point. Remember last year, Rhode Island came in and was able to uh, steal a win on the road against a team that was Ranked in the top 25 to start the year. This time around, Delaware did what they're supposed to do, winning the first game of the year in front of a great crowd here at Delaware Stadium. Uh, we're viewing it from the visiting side and looking at all those blue seats. They were full to start this game. Well, this defense has really held up uh, much better than maybe some people were going to give it credit for. Not me. I really like the focus of Delaware. Chris Kosh done a nice job of molding this team. And I think the back end and those young linebackers are going to grow up very rapidly as they've done here tonight. Third down and 11. Henderson throws. Pass is caught by Zimmerman, but well short of the sticks. First catch of the year for Zimmerman. Isaiah Small made the stop, and it's fourth down for the Bluehead. We talked so much about Nolan Henderson's ability to get the ball out of his hands fast, but he showed off some real arm talent there. That was a long throw across the field. Zimmerman. Showed up for him on a little sit-down route. A nice game. Not enough to get the first down, but I just like the velocity of the throw. Henderson's got a great throwing platform. Really delivers the ball quickly and on target. Nine-yard gain, not enough. And Roth will punt this one away. Keenan Black comes up to get it. Hesitates, and then on the hesitation gets past some Delaware defenders. Running at the 40 to the 45. Midfield, big hit by Brian Kamikati on the block. Just as Henley went flying, Cavacanti, it was clean. It allowed Black to get a final five yards extra on that run. A 45-yard punt by Jake Roth and 28 yards uh, by Keenan Black, a guy that was uh, the backup quarterback a year ago and now showing he can do. He's moved to defensive back, although I don't think we've seen him in the game on defense. A return man on the punt unit with a big pickup. About this guy, Brian Cavacante. We talk so yeah. much about our good players. Cavacante is somebody you should be watching. He plays very hard. He's got a lot of skill. He's playing hurt, and he's out on special teams throwing a block to free up his teammate. A really fine competitor. Bethia gives it to the running back. I believe it was Harris in the middle of the pile after a two yard gain. Down to the 46 yard line, a two yard gain to start the drive. Second and eight coming up for DSU as the clock is ticking under six minutes, 5.50 now. And Delaware up 31 to six. The trainer has really showed up well here. Coming in at times in the second half for Drew Nichols. He has good fits. He plays downhill very rapidly, has a good sense of where the ball is. Running back is Taj Washington, number 32. As Bethia will Give it to Trey Gross. Gross has had a good game as well. Gross for Annapolis Senior High School. Led the team with 480 yards receiving a year ago. Five touchdowns. 
Martin. He's been a favorite target of the in this game. A 13-yard pickup makes it first down and 10 at the Delaware 33-yard line. Hornets, I'm sure, want to end this game on a positive note, trying to get into the end zone here on what could be their final drive. Water stumbles after getting the give. Flag on the play as he reaches the 32-yard line. Already 10 penalties in the game for DSU. A clean one for the Hens. Only two penalties for 10 yards. Jordan we'll Juicy Morris doing a nice job there of piling that up and forcing the ball outside. One of the keynotes of the Delaware defensive tackles are they almost are two gap players. They'll line up head on and they may work to either gap doing a nice Legal job shift. Of the system. Legal shift, offense, 25. Five yard penalty, we play second down. Another penalty against DSU. It's been a, a rocky day for, uh, for the officials at times as well. As now there's still a pause. A, a lot of uh, question marks uh, with this uh, officiating crew. As they call the penalty, and now they're still awaiting to move the football. They do. They move it back to the 38-yard line. Anthony Hayes, the referee in this one. It's his first game, too. 458 and taken now. Fourth quarter action and a 31-6 lead for Delaware. DSU going right to left as we see it. Bethia give the waters running strong, but right into a wall of the Delaware linemen. You could give that one to Dominic Cavato. You could give that tackle to Caleb Ashworth. And there's another hand in on the stop as well. And now a Newark urgent care injury stoppage as a man is down for Delaware State, an offensive line, one of the big guys up front. And it looks to be Eric Kareem, the starting right guard, a senior 6'4", 310. And uh, he is down helmet to the turf. Final stop things momentarily. In this one, a reminder that after the game, don't go anywhere. We've got the American Spirit Federal Credit Union post-game show. We'll recap this one. Bill and I will talk a bit as there will be a trophy presentation to the Blue Hens. They'll win the trophy for the eighth time with the trophy, ninth time overall. Their trophy the first time around was a playoff victory. And uh, I was at that game. I was at that game as well. I, I was standing. I was in, uh, I believe, Section B. You probably had better seats than I did, Scott. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, but it was a fun one. I remember I think Matt Janis was at that game as well, working uh, with Mike Corey and crew. But it was a fun one. 31-6 to six, uh, is the score here. And uh, so they'll have a trophy presentation. After that, of course, we got the fight song. And uh, then we've got Benny Pinella back in the studio. He'll have scores from around college football. He'll recap the game for you. He'll have final stats. And then Matt Janis will talk with head coach Danny Rocco as his team will move to 1-0 on the year. Finally, I'll recap, get you a schedule update as uh, the Hens will move on to play Rhode Island on the road next week. A little revenge game as Rhode Island spoiled the first game of the year. A season ago. 4.37 left to go and uh, unfortunately an end of the game injury for Eric Kareem. He's being helped to the sideline now sitting on the bench. You'll get a look at, at that training staff. As we get back in action, third down and 15 for Bethia. Trips to the right side. As Bethia awaits the snap, he gets it looking right. And he throws it high for Waters. They were trying to Set up a pass to the small running back. Cavato was in coverage, and he threw it high for the 5'8 running back. We talked about the run fits by Cavato earlier on. That time he diagnosed the screen into the boundary as they were trying to get Waters working over there. Cavato right next to him forced Bethea to throw the ball away. Really good defense there by a defensive lineman in terms of his quick recognition of what play Delaware State was going to run. DSU will stay on the field on fourth down. Last time out, they could not convert on a fourth down and four. It was a turnover on downs, and now fourth down and 15 to go. Ball on Delaware 38. Bethia checking with the sideline. Balance set, two wide receivers to both sides. Running back is Waters. And the play clock was showing zero as I saw it. I don't see a flag, though. Bethia will throw under pressure. It's high. It's caught. What a grab at the 15-yard line for a first down by Quana Colley. And an even better throw under duress by Tylik Bethia in his first game as a college ball player. What made that such a good throw, as you so perfectly described, with the fact he was rolling out left, had to take his front hand off the ball, and really made that like he was playing in a schoolyard. 
So a fourth down conversion puts DSU in the red zone. Chance to get six. Water starts right, pivots left, spins, and goes down at the 10. A lot of work for a five-yard gain. A hard run by Mike Waters, the junior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Waters runs with a nice low center of gravity, has the ability to jump cut back into a lane that develops inside. Good patience by the runner from Delaware State. Water set the freshman record for rush yards two years ago. I think he'll get back in the mix this season. Bathia, end zone, tossing it up to his favorite target, Quana Kali, and a touchdown for the DSU Hornets. In the fourth quarter, with just 3.20 left, DSU finally gets into the end zone. Kali did a nice job there, almost boxed out the defender. He's only six feet, but did a good job of pivoting and making himself available to Bathia, who threw a ball very accurately from the pocket. So a great job of converting on fourth down and 15 to keep the drive alive. And an eight-play, 48-yard drive. Ends with six and now seven for the DSU Hornets. We'll stay here with the score, 31-13, to 13, Delaware on top. of What does that mean, Bill, when, at the end of a game? And, and you know, you're going to win the game, and, of course, you want to win, but there's certain style points so when, when you're on the field and, and as a defense. In the first game, all the talk about the inexperience on defense, I'm sure they would have loved to come out of here uh, shutting them and keeping them out of the end zone. Uh, so DSU scores for the first time on a 10-yard pass. 31-13 to 13 is the score, but uh, I'm sure they didn't want to uh, let that one up. You certainly don't, but the other side to that is you need to get your twos involved. You've got to see them on tape so you can work corrections because you never know when you're going to have an injury, and one of those guys is really going to have to play when it's important. So I think it's more important to get these guys in, worry less about the score, and make sure they get reps and get on tape so you can correct them, and they will get better. Drive went eight plays, 48 yards, took 246 off the clock. And Delaware 31 to 13 in the league. 320 left to go in the contest. And uh, we'll have final stats for you after this game. But looking into the scoreboard, 314 yards for uh, Delaware. 341 for DSU. They were able to move the football. 231 through the air, 203 through the air for uh, Delaware. And about even in the running game. 111 yards for uh, Delaware, 110 for a DSU and the Hornets gonna kick this one away wanting to get it is Dejon Lito bounce into the end zone and a touchback as Delaware's offense will come back out on the field with 320 left to go well, I res respect Ron Milstead there I think Delaware was expecting an onside kick they were up versus the congested huddle and as they broke they expanded but Lee never got back to the end zone good job by Milstead probably not a great chance to win this game. Sometimes you can get some guys hurt on onside kicks unless you just want to feature it and see how you're going to do it. But I thought that was a good decision by him to kick the ball deep. This DSU team, I think, for anyone that watched this game or listened to us and tried to describe it, uh, better uh, than they were last year, better than many maybe expected coming into this game. They're going to do all right, I believe, against MEAC competition. I would totally agree with you. Cavacani, a really good player. They've got two quarterbacks that can play and two really physical running backs. Here's Knight, his biggest gain of the day. Good for nine, maybe ten, as he broke out to the right side of the field. Nolan Henderson giving to Will Knight. That's something that high school fans saw a bunch. Both of them Gatorade players of the year, Henderson and Will Knight. Knight originally committing to Old Dominion, playing or not playing for Old Dominion a year ago, and now still a freshman in status as he comes back home. Second down and three. They gave him seven on the run. Balls to the Delaware 32-yard line. Again, give tonight. He's got a big hole. 45, 50, 40. It's a chase at the 30, 20, 10, and tackled from behind as he gets inside the 10 when Will Knight Biggest run of the day, 60 yards for Delaware's high school all-time leading rusher. A great cut on the inside zone as he saw the hole collapse to the left, works back immediately to the right, does a great job of avoiding the second-level tacklers, gets into a sprint, and I mentioned earlier I've never seen him get caught from behind. That wasn't truly from behind. That guy had a great angle. Knight did a wonderful job there of reading exactly where the play was going to go up and then showed a great burst to get to the second level before they had an opportunity to reconvene on him. 
Now an injured Dell State Hornet stops play for just a moment. Uh, Newark Urgent Care injury stoppages. Devin Smith comes off the field, and now Delaware will have it in the red zone after a huge pickup by Will Knight. That's good to get Will on top of the uh, running list. He's got 68 yards. That leads Delaware in today's game. Andre Robinson will come in to give Knight a blow as it's first and goal to go at the seven-yard line. Henderson out of the shotgun. Turns, gives to Robinson. DSU all over it. That's going to be a loss of three back to the 10. And that's Parker again, the young man from Delmar that we talked about. Uh, an excellent competitor, a two-way player in high school. Did a nice job there of knifing through the second offensive line of Delaware. They've just got to make sure they get their zone steps coordinated because if Robinson can get his pad level going downhill, he's going to be tough to stop. Henderson out shotgun to the left is Robinson. Second down goal to go from the 10. Henderson awaits the snap. It's high. He grabs it, gives to Robinson. Robinson changes direction, powers his way inside the five, down at the three and a half. It'll be third down and goal to go as he approaches 90 ticks left. Nice block there by center Mickey Henry. It's very difficult, more than people think, to be able to snap the ball in shotgun, take the proper steps, zone block, and then work up to the second level. That's about four different things you've got to do, and Mickey Henry did that very well. He's a very competent backup to Mario Farinelli. Third down, goal to go from the three after the huge run by Will Knight to set it up. Henderson gives to Robinson, and he goes nowhere fast as DSU with another stop in the backfield. So under a minute left, and Henderson looking towards the sideline. 49-6 left, Delaware up 31-13. Will they try to punch it in one last time? Fourth down, six yards to go for a score. You know, Rocco's, Danny Rocco's going to let the clock run down, I believe, and then call a timeout and kind of make a decision here whether he wants to kick a field goal for points or let his offense operate. I mean, this is one of those strange situations where it really doesn't have any bearing on the game. I would say work on what you want to get ready for for next week. Timeout coming, and Coach Rocco gives the signal. Clock stopped at 19 seconds. Uh, we'll go back to that run by Will Knight, uh, showing us what some of us have seen in the state of Delaware before and certainly have seen off the gives from Nolan Henderson. Will Knight, a three-time Delaware State champion. They won in 2015, 2016, and 2017 out of Smyrna High School. Uh, Delaware, as I mentioned, all-time leading rusher in the state of Delaware, 6,490 yards. He scored 97 touchdowns. As a Smyrna Eagle, he almost had his first as a blue hen, but what a run that was. He's got great versatility, good pass blocker, good receiver in the flat. He used to run a lot of Wildcat. I think he probably holds the record for no, most two-point conversions in high school football if that record's ever kept. But what I like about him is he's a powerful runner who's got a good low center of gravity with a big-time burst. He can jump cut, and then once he gets in the open field, he has excellent speed. Decision is to go for a field goal. Give Jake Roth another shot at it. So this one's going to be from 24 yards up and wide to the right. Jake Roth holding his leg as he kind of hobbles off the field. Not a great day kicking-wise for uh, Jake Roth, who had to do everything. Nick Pritchard not available, so Roth was punting. Roth was doing kickoffs, and uh, Roth there missing a field goal. Uh, but... Again, as you mentioned, I thought that was uh, great. Practice what you want to practice uh, with fourth down and six yards to go towards the end zone. They wanted to give Jake Roth another shot, and uh, unfortunately for Roth, he uh, missed the field goal there. This is, remember, Roth's first game as a starting kicker as Frank Rago had been sensational the past several years for Delaware. Scott, to do all three disciplines, that's much more difficult than people think. It's completely different practice patterns, different leg action, different leg swings. You're using some different muscles between the long kickoff, the field goals, and then the punting. It really requires an awful lot of practice. Roth is up to it, and it will get Pritchard back hopefully soon. One of my favorite uh, special teams guys in all of America, but Jake Roth has done a remarkable job in his career here, especially with those kickoffs. 13 seconds left but before it becomes official. A running play to potentially end this one from Taj Washington. And this one going to be in the books. Delaware for the ninth time in school history defeats their in-state foe. Delaware State this time 31 
to 13, the final score as uh, Danny Rocco and Rod Milstead will shake hands near midfield and a trophy presentation coming up for that Route 1 rivalry trophy that Delaware will receive for the eighth time. It'll stay in that football office. That's where Matt Janis will talk with Danny Rocco in just a little bit as we get towards the American Spirit Federal Credit Union post-game show with locations in Newark, Middletown, and Dover. Visit americanspirit.org. So the Hens slow to get started. It was uh, 3 nothing. then it was 3-3. Delaware State crept ahead, but after that, uh, Delaware was able to put this one away, scoring 13 points in the second quarter, 9 in the third, and adding 6 in the fourth quarter, a 31 to 13 final, and let's talk about it a bit as Delaware improves to 1 0 to start the year. DSU 0 and 1, and uh, the Hens with a victory in front of their newly renovated crowd or newly renovated stadium. Big crowd on hand to watch the Hens do it. It was an excellent atmosphere tonight. I thought the defense of Chris Kosh really did a good job. They did give up that touchdown late. I thought they were on the field a lot in the first half. They did a nice job with their sub packages. The back end held up very well. I thought the young linebackers really ran to the football extremely well. Johnny Buchanan, Andrew Nichols, and Liam Trainer when he got in there, I thought all did a great job. So that front line set the tone. They did hurt us a few times on some zone cutbacks, but once we got the fills figured out at halftime, always good teams make smart adjustments at halftime. Chris Kosh got the safety down into the box, both Whitehead and Plaque had some big time hits. Offensively, I thought Kehoe had a great night. Uh, he opened up with some short passes, then worked long, was able to run the ball well. Nolan Henderson comes in and showcases his.